Live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Root Sports brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight it's game three of this series between the Houston Astros and the Kansas City Royals. Welcome everybody on Root Sports. Bill Brown and Jeff Blum. Bart Ennis joins us shortly to see the Astros take on the team with the best winning percentage Blummer in the American League. And a lot of people look at this as a barometer of the Astros and how much they have improved when they take on one of the best teams. I think it is a really good barometer. The American League champions are in town. They've taken the first two games. They had a rookie on the mound in that first game of the series, Lance McCullers, who beat them. Then you back it up with the ace, Dallas Keuchel. They are in pole position right now to take all three of these games. How does this year for the Astros against teams above 500 compare with the last two? So much better. I was going to say, you hate to bring it up, but you got to put those 2013 and 14 numbers up there. You see the struggles, a lot of roster turnover, but the reason we put those numbers up there is because that bottom line is so great. The Astros are playing incredible baseball, beating up on those sub-500 teams, and that's what good ball clubs do. They don't take a break. They keep pounding on those teams that deserve it. The plus-500 teams, that's exactly where you want them. You want them to split those series against them because if you keep that pace up, you're going to be in first place for a very long time. They've come a long way since 2013, and during this winning streak, they've won the last five from the Royals with big numbers for Houston. Yeah, and it was a good time last time at Kauffman Stadium. Some of the numbers they put up were electric. George Springer went and started going off in that series. But here at home, Altuve with a couple bombs on this homestand, but they continue to pound that Royals pitching staff. But how about what they've done offensively? 31 runs scored to five for the Kansas City Royals. So that bottom number, the ERA for the Astros at one, that's an amazing stat. Coming up, Royal Flush. The Astros reach the halfway point today in full command of their playoff destiny. Can they sweep the defending American League champs and hit the road on a high note? The Astros and Royals square off next. is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. Coming up, the fast and the curious. The top of the Astros rotation is firing on all cylinders. And Vincent Velasquez would love to blaze his way into that group. How can he punch his ticket into the starting five? 
We welcome Bart into the discussion when we come back. Royals and win their fourth in a row. That would be quite an accomplishment. But the, the Astros have really found it. They found their groove here at Minute Maid Park, building a 27 and 16 home record. That's the best in the American League. And this is a team that loves to play in front of big crowds, and the crowds are getting bigger and bigger. And in fact, during their winning streak, it's been all about pitching, as the Astros have combined to allow just three runs to the Yankees and Royals during this winning streak. So tonight, It'll be Vince Velasquez on the hill. Vince making his fifth start. Oddly enough, he has not figured in any of the previous decisions, but he has pitched well on balance. In this last start against the Yankees, he did something interesting. He backed off his fastball velocity just a little bit. He can get it up to 96, 97 miles an hour. But against the Yankees, he was more like 91, 92 miles per hour. It seemed to help him command it a little bit better. He was hitting spots, getting in favorable counts, and it made his secondary pitches even that much better. So he's been working with pitching coach Brett Strom. A.J. Hinch told us he is a very coachable young man, and perhaps that's one of the adjustments that Stromy has asked him to make. And even he knows when he needs that 97-mile-an-hour gas, he can still reach back and get it. So that's something that you can look for from Velasquez as he goes tonight. But as I pitch it, Back up to the broadcast booth, Bill Brown and Jeff Blum. Guys, here we go. One more young arm coming out of this Astros system that shows great promise. And he could, when, if he can control that fastball the way he did against the Yankees, that's his best pitch. He'll be very successful tonight. You know, he's pitched uh, really well, especially in two games, leaving with the lead and he did not get a decision in either of those. His first start at Chicago against the White Sox, five shutout innings, a one nothing lead. The Astros lost it later. Last time out, a 2 nothing lead, two men on base, leaving after six and a third, getting a no decision, and the Astros lost it three to two. So Vince Velasquez, even though he hasn't won, has put himself in a position a few times, Jeff. Yep. He's a good kid. He's got a live arm. We're going to get a chance to maybe dig into those numbers a little bit, but making his fifth start on the season, no record on there. But what impresses me is that opponent batting average at 239, and that's actually the same number against his fastball. He throws it a lot. And we're going to see it right here with this graphic that pops up. He's throwing that fastball more, and Bart hit on it. He changed speeds on it a little bit, and that's what good pitchers can do is take a little bit off that fastball, slow down their windup, make sure you're throwing strikes with it. It also might be a case where he throws the four-seamer around 95 to 97 miles an hour, maybe holds that two-seam grip, takes a little bit of velocity off, and gets a little more run out of that pitch. But whatever it was, he was doing a good job of throwing more fastballs, and the reason he was because he was in the strike zone more often. And you can see the numbers decreasing on that right-hand side with the opponent slugging and average against. 
So that's a good sign for Vince Velasquez as he tries to make a bid for this fifth spot in this rotation and stick around a little bit longer. We've had more rain in the Houston area today. Been sort of late arriving crowds this week because of a lot of travel difficulties. And as this finale of the homestand arrives, the Astros continue to play good baseball with a three-game winning streak. Here's the Kansas City Royals starting lineup. Their leadoff man is shortstop Alcides Escobar with Mike Moustakis at third base, Lorenzo Kane the DH, Kendrys Morales at first base, Salvador Perez the catcher, Alex Gordon in left field, Alex Rios in right, Omar Infante at second base, Gerard Dice in the center field. Their pitcher is Edinson Volquez. He's a good one. Escobar gets in the box on a seven game hitting streak, 11 for 31 on the road trip, and a 281 batting average for Alcides Escobar. He's one for four in this series. That is outside ball one. Paul Emmel is the home plate umpire. The Royals are on a lengthy road trip. This is the final game. They're five and three. They'll go back home to play 11 at home. They don't have an all star break uh, any early because of any off days, so they'll take their break when everybody else takes it, but they're playing right up to the break. Last two starts have been much lower on the ERA for Velasquez, and he pounds the zone there for a one and two count. So this Kansas City club really grinding at Blummer and playing really well on the road, 22 and 17 for the season. Well, they're a championship ball club, they know how to play together. Ned Yost doing a good job of rotating guys in and out there, putting them in good positions to succeed. On a breaking pitch, Escobar chased it and struck out. Let's take a look now at the MD Anderson strike zone. See those first three pitches are fastballs, and what you like to see is those first two strikes getting in the strike zone. He gets ahead in the count. You can pretty much do whatever you want to a hitter with that one two count. Bury a slider, see if he chases, and he got him to chase on that pitch. Good block by Castro. Mike Mustakas at 313 has seven homers, 31 runs batted in. The infield continues to shift, playing him to pull. He is 0 for 8 in this series. Rocket power fastball inside ball one. Velasquez threw 89 pitches that last start against the Yankees, going six and a third innings. And the California native slots that fastball inside and gets a foul for a 1 1 count. The Astros, I think, put the shift on. Realizing that Moustakas has done a good job of going the other way, continue to pound him on that inside corner. We saw it frequently in the first game with Lance McCullers, do a couple of good sliders down and in, and Keiko was just blowing him up yesterday. Struck him out. No, he got strike two. It's one ball, two strikes on Moustakas. He rode that one up high. And he's got some high octane stuff going early, Blummer. Really does, and that's that forcing fastball that starts at the top of the zone, but he throws it so hard it almost Gives you that visual as if it's rising up out of the zone. Mm -hmm. And again, ahead one and two, do whatever he wants. Fastball with a pop up. Luis Valbuena. Two outs. Take a look around Minute Maid. Evan Gaddis making his third start in left field for the Houston Astros. George Springer again in center field. Preston Tucker moving from left to right. Luis Valbuena again at Third base, Carlos Correa getting a day off. Marlon Gonzalez out there. He's been swinging about well, too. Jose Altuve at second. John Singleton making an appearance at first. And Castro the Astro working with the youngster, Vince Velasquez. Lorenzo Cain with a 296 average has six homers. We see John Singleton at first playing well off the line on Cain. He is far from the first base bag. That's a liner out to left center field. Wide open spaces. That ball will roll all the way to the warning track and the wall. Kane has been bothered by a hamstring problem. Will continue to run. The ball uh, was a problem for George Springer out there. And Kane winds up at third base. Looked like a double. And Kane was easing into second. And then it got away. And he continued on to third. Kane can hit. 
It's actually a pretty well located fastball. It goes right back up the middle, but with the shift, you can see George Springer right up second base by quite a bit. But a low line drive has plenty of time to get in that gap. And even with that bad hamstring, Kane is easy, easily gliding into third base with that triple. You can see him nursing it a little bit. That's not full speed for Lorenzo. That's his fourth triple of the year. He ties Evan Gaddis. Oh, we got a battle. Andrews Morales fly ball deep left field. Gaddis going back, looking up, and the Royals have a two to nothing lead. Morales hits number 10, giving him 50 runs batted in. Kansas City had scored one run in the first two games of the series combined. The mattress firm super, super slow mo four seam fastball. You see the grip, but just an elevated fastball out over the plate. Kendrys Morales, seasoned hitter here in the major leagues, does a good job of letting that ball travel and using the velocity that Velasquez provides. And the Royals draw first blood. Now Salvador Perez comes up. 270, 13 bombs. He's driven in 34. Breaking pitch, strike one to Salvador Perez. He's two for eight with a homer in this series. He made his first start at DH in last night's game, going one for four. The ball goes foul. He is an Iron Man catcher. Bought more than 160 games, including postseason last year. And again, he's built for it. He is a large human being. Certainly one of the top young catchers around. Starts with that open stance. Not chasing, and it's one and two. Perez is from Venezuela. Salvador drove in 70 last year and he won his second straight gold glove. The 21st catcher in Major League history to have 500 hits by age 25. In the air on the infield. Castro and Singleton. Singleton and is caught by Velasquez <laughs> after a brush with Singleton. It's the pitcher who makes the play. Two runs, two hits. Kansas City 2, Houston coming up with this lineup. Springer out to the Gaddis. The first three in just a moment.
The Royals got the two run homer from Morales in the top of the first. Now the Astros come up with their starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. George Springer leads it off. He's in center field. Jose Altuve is at second base with Evan Gaddis playing left field tonight. Luis Valbuena is at third base. Chris Carter, the DH. John Singleton at first base. Preston Tucker in right field. Marwin Gonzalez at shortstop. Jason Castro, the catcher. And eight game winner, Edinson Volquez on the mound. 4 0 his last four starts with an ERA under three. There's strike one to Springer. 263 for George, 13 homers, 29 runs batted in. Lopez has great numbers against the Astros in his career. Liner off the glove of the shortstop Escobar, and Springer has a hit. He was one for seven in this series, ripped a homer last night, feeding the masses. Fans able to enjoy a Chick fil A sandwich after he banged one off the left field foul pole. Now back to line drive singles. Bit of a leg kick from George Springer. Coming on that first pitch fastball. That's a good sign when George is going back up the middle with line drives. Focus on getting on base, wreaking havoc out there. Jose Altuve has put together a nine game hitting streak. 292 average, seven homers. He's driven in 32. Strike for Volquez. And you may have noticed those glittering career numbers for Volquez against the Astros. 6 0 with a 2.09 ERA for eight starts, including a one hitter. Got his 1,000th strikeout of his career last start. Round ball and in the hole and on through. Misplayed by Escobar. And he is a terrific shortstop. Now runners at first and second and nobody out. And I firmly believe that Altuve was trying to hit that ball where he did. There was a unique conversation that he had with A.J. Hinch in spring training when he grounded out four times to the third baseman. And A.J. said, what are you trying to do in this game? And Altuve said, sometimes they leave that five and a half hole open and I'm trying to hit it. And it looked like that swing was purposely directing that ball into that five and a half hole just far enough away to make it a tough play for Escobar. That's amazing. Watch this swing. See, from our angle, it looked like he really tried to get around that pitch and hook it, which is odd in itself because he's so good at going the other way with the runner at first base. A single for Altuve. Here's Evan Gaddis now. Takes the sinker down and in. Ball one to Gaddis. I watch the swing, the location of the pitch on that out of the third coming back, but you can see through that barrel head at it to get around it and hook that ball. Kid, is, kid is always thinking. Yeah, he is. Gaddis was two for four last night, a single and a triple. Third start for Evan in left field this year. In for a strike, one and one. Lopez. His average 94 on his fastball. That was the curve coming in at 80, and the batting average against that pitch is only 174. He has 74 major league wins and 63 losses beginning his career with the Rangers. He's 31. Foul ball, and it's one and two to Gaddis. Ocas last year with Pittsburgh. Was 13 and 7 with a 3.04 ERA, working 192 innings. Then he was a free agent, and Kansas City picked him up on a two year, $20 million deal in December after James Shields had left and moved along to San Diego. So, in essence, he's the replacement in their rotation for Shields. And he's pitching a lot better in Kansas City than Shields is in San Diego so far this year. Tap foul, still one and two. Valbuena on deck. Funny the way that works, but the Royals really couldn't see their way clear to go that high on the budget for Shields, who's 33 years old and he has a lot of innings on him. Well, if you had to look at it right now, you'd say they made the right move, but it is a tough call because the way James Shields pitched throughout his time there at Kansas City, you know they were considering paying it. Yeah, he's been terrific.
Gaddis chases a breaking pitch in the dirt and strikes out. One out for Volquez. Check out Ned Yost's defense that he put out there behind Volquez. Out in left field, Alex Gordon, of course. Gerard Dyson in center field, Alex Rios in right. Moustakas and Escobar again on that left side. Omar Infante at second base. Kendrys Morales playing first base in all three games of this series. And Salvador, Salvador Perez back behind home plate. This is going to be the important at bat of this inning. Luis Valbuena runners at first and second, one out. 199, 19 homers to lead the club, 35 runs batted in for Valbuena. And it's strike one. Still good velocity from Volquez. I always had a hard time picking the ball up off him. I was uh, fortunate enough to face him a couple times when he was pitching with Cincinnati. But just kind of that funky arm, he kind of shoots it down that back leg and then comes. Creeping back over the top. Hides it real well. Springer takes off and so does Altuve and they pull off a double steal. Perez failed to catch the pitch. And it was ball one, one and one. Springer gets his 14th steal. Altuve his 22nd. He leads the American League. Great jump and even better pitch to run on. Caught him napping a little bit. Anytime you can guess off speed and get a good jump, it's a great time to run. Could be highly important that double steal. Getting the Astros out of that ground ball double play situation. Rob Buena swings. There's a throw to third and Springer diving back. One and two. What well, makes this AB even bigger? Astros aggressive getting the first two guys on and the steal puts him 90 feet closer with that one out on the board. Infield is playing back in the middle. Nice ground ball up the middle. Moves the runner to third and scores a run. Chris Carter on deck here at Minute Maid Park. The Astros have won 19 of their last 26 in this ballpark. Now Buena looks at it. It's two and two. Volquez is coming off a 5 to 2 win at Oakland on Friday in which he gave up just three hits and one run in seven innings walking one fanning three. He's won his last four starts. Chop foul the breaking ball and Valbuena stays alive. Gary Pettis doing his job cleaning Springer up. That kid never is having a bad time on the ball field. The Astros had not pulled off the double steal since May 3rd against Texas. Well, Buena looks at strike three, and that's a huge out for Volquez. Two down. It's a great running fastball. As a hitter in two strikes, you're looking over that outer third at that fastball. And when a pitcher can come in at 95 and get that kind of movement, you just tip your cap, go back to the dugout, try and get him next time. Tough pitch in a key situation. Chris Carter with 14 homers, 38 runs batted in as a 197 batting average. He's one for six with a homer in this series. Pitch stays up and it's ball one with John Singleton on deck. The Astros are third in the American League and run scored with 356. In for a strike and it's one and one. The Royals' biggest strength is their bullpen. Their three top relievers have not seen action in this series. They've been behind. Carter with a high drive. Dyson way back. Warning track for a long 
400 foot out number three. No runs, two hits, two men left, two to nothing, Kansas City. Win a thousand dollar shopping spree with Jose Altuve at Academy Sports and Outdoors. To enter, vote 35 times at Astros.com slash vote and post a screenshot of your ballot using the hashtag vote Altuve on Facebook or Twitter until July 2nd. Vote for your chance to win. Christy Feliz will be there. No, you don't have time for shopping. <laughs> no, I am too busy voting. You're voting Altuve. Voting Altuve. 35 times. So that's a perfect segue. Get your t-shirt on. I have my t-shirt on. I've got my button on underneath it. We are so close. We've gained so much traction uh, this week, really, on Omar Infante with the Royals, who everyone knows that we're up against at this point. And we really need the city to rally around us for the last 24 hours to really push it all the way through. Voting ends tomorrow, 11.59 p.m., Central Time. All day. We have all day tomorrow to really make it happen, and we've put together a few fun things to hopefully get the fans voting on multiple email addresses tomorrow. Alex Gordon with a single ride field. What are we doing tomorrow? So today, actually, for all folks that are uh, that are in park uh, or during the game, sorry, uh, you can win one of these fabulous Yes Way Jose T-shirts. Um, all you have to do is tweet your screenshot with your proof of voting 35 times with the hashtag #VoteAltuve. From the first pitch of this game and to the final out, and you're entered for a chance to win this limited edition T-shirt. It's not too bad, is it? No, you guys did a good job with that one. And the fans voted for it to be produced and distributed, so I think everyone should want one, especially if you weren't able to come to the game last Saturday when we gave them away. Yes. A lot of folks are envious of you right now. I think everyone should vote. Everyone should enter, and maybe we'll throw in a couple others. Who knows? Because of the T-shirt, or she's up here with us? Well, probably the latter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's happening all game today. Um, like I said, from first pitch through the final out. So definitely make sure that you're voting tonight. Um, but then tomorrow, quite a few things going on. Well, as you mentioned, the Academy shopping spree, we're still pushing that. Um, the 35 times hashtag vote all two bay. Um, on Facebook, you can go and add the comment to the tagged post. On uh, Twitter, though, we're doing a little bit of a different sweepstakes program throughout the day. Gordon into second on the wild pitch. Listen to what we have for you here. From 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., you have the chance to win an autographed Jose Altuve baseball. From 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., you have the chance to win tickets to a game and batting practice field passes. From 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., tickets and a one-hour orbit visit. From 6 to 9 p.m., an autographed Jose Altuve jersey. So the overall sweeps from 9 o'clock until uh, the voting closes tomorrow, 9 a.m. until voting closes, the grand, oh, sorry, so from 9 p.m. until voting closes at 11.59 p.m., their grand prize, I almost missed this, uh, is Diamond Club seats and dinner with Reed Ryan. 
Mm. And Reed likes steak. Reed loves steak. Yeah. And Reed would like to eat in the Diamond Club with whomever it is that might win this because he will be very grateful that you voted 35 times. At least. Nice. So All autographed Altuve baseball, tickets and BP field passes, tickets in a one-hour orbit visit, an autographed Altuve jersey. That's a hit to right center field. And that's going to make it three to nothing, Kansas City. On the RBI single by Rios. And those Diamond Club tickets and dinner with three Brian. So lots of great stuff going on tomorrow. Really encouraging everyone to kind of paint the city orange through all your social media accounts, through everywhere that you have access. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors, your coworkers, everyone. Let's really make sure that we get Altuve in on the fan vote this year as he deserves. Um, and again, we've really gained traction this year, uh, or sorry, this week, and we have just a little bit of a ways to go to get him the rest of the way there. So, how many votes were made up by Altuve this week? Uh, over a couple hundred thousand we've okay. made up already. So. We've made great progress, and I think, well, I know there is less of that gap to to fill. So we'll find out Sunday, right? Yes. yes. When Sunday all this Monday. is done, you're going to have a post Altuve party, and everybody's going to ice their clicking finger. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's going to be some rehab to be doing after that. And I will say, I think sometimes the misconception is that voting 35 times is a daunting process, but really, and you've done it. Right? I tried it. You go on and you click through it, do the full process once, but then if you're on that same email address, it keeps you on that page. You do your little code and you keep going. And really, within five minutes, not even, you're done 35 times. Create a new email address and do it all over again. That's beautiful. <laughs> Even folks uh, who simple. are, shall exactly. we say, not too computer literate can do it in less than five minutes. What are you That's saying it. about yourself? That's it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Christy, of course, could do it within 45 seconds. I don't know about that. She's a veteran, I'm sure. Yeah. And at this point, now, I wouldn't even deal with the National League. Go, go on. <clears throat> and even if you're just dealing with second base, if you don't feel like you have time to vote for the whole team, just go on, click Altuve, and push it through 35 times. So you really can just simple. vote for one position, you that's can. it? You can. It's really oh. not that difficult. So if oh. you say, not know I don't want to go through the full process, I just want to go vote Altuve because that's what we're really trying to do. Now, I think all of our guys deserve some love, right? But yeah. if you guys are worried about time, just go on, click Altuve, push it all the way through. You don't even have to fill it out all the way. What is the National League anyway? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a while. Yeah. One and two. Yeah, Altuve has been there twice. This would be a special throw, though, to starts. That's what this voting is all about. Swing and a miss. And Infante struck out. So that may be even more motivation for you to vote. I think that was a sign. That could have been a good be. Well, I think the frustrating thing as a fan is that if Omar Infante makes it, Jason Kipnis in Cleveland, who's having a great year as a second baseman, yeah. would be the chosen second baseman to back up Omar Infante. So that would push Altuve out of the situation. Yeah. And it wouldn't be the two best first or two best second basemen playing right. in that all-star game. And then you potentially wind up in a final vote situation, yep. which that'll come out on Monday. And if if we're not able to get all TV in, which I really do believe in this city, and I think we're going to do it. But if we didn't, then I, I'm pretty certain that he would be a final vote candidate. So I'll probably be, well, I guess we don't have any games, so I won't again. be able to bother you up here again. But we will be doing a lot to try to get him through that way. But if not, I mean, we might have a couple of guys or two that could end up on that final vote uh, if he's vo if Altuve is voted in uh, outright. And we should also remind our fans that this is the first time in a few years that we've legitimately had to have a concern with what this all-star game means right so that's all the more reason to get Altuve in because you know here we are heading into the all-star break and we're, we're in first place we're in contention this is going to matter when we make it to the world series nice christy power of positive thinking you can put that on record <laughs> oh we're, we're i tape every game so i'll save it for you you're on record well <laughs> take it back a year ago to kansas city and where the royals were a year ago yes. There they were playing in the World Series. It could happen. Absolutely. How much fun has this team been this year? It's been really, really enjoyable. On a scale of 1 to 10, it's 12. I just took the number right out of my head. <laughs> How about for you, though? Because, you know, with the fans bringing all this energy into the ballpark, wearing the T-shirts and Keiko beards and things like that, there's been a lot happening that we haven't 
not seen in a few years. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. And I think that the the best thing is the positive feedback that we're getting on this team, not only for the wins that are on the board, but for the way they're playing the game. That's a stolen base. Rios into second base. That's his fourth steal of the year. Yeah, people are really enjoying the experience. It's apparent to everyone how much fun they're having. You see the shots in the dugout with Springer leading their dances and everything else when folks are coming in after a home run or a, or a score. It's it really is contagious and they're they're hustling down the line. You really can't watch this team and, and think that they're not working hard and having fun every day. He almost took his toe off the bag, Christy. He would have been out. Oh. Nudge him a little next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Push him off the bag. We're gonna miss by Dyson. And that is strikeout. Number three. Well, I think that's a really good point that you bring up, Christy, is that not only are you getting Altuve in there, having Altuve is going to enhance the American League chance. Absolutely. So do the league a favor. Do the league a favor so we can ultimately do ourselves a favor. Yes. Because we will be there. And it's great, too, because we've been talking for quite a few years now about our plan and building up our system and having sustainable success, and it's unfolding exactly the way that we've been talking about and, frankly, a little earlier than... Than, uh, than maybe we would have thought. And so to be able to see the foundation lay out now in front of our fans and, and see it come to fruition the way that it has has really been exciting. Ball one to Escobar. Did you see the Sports Illustrated article? I did. That was interesting. Getting rid of the curse. Yeah. <laughs> And you know the fans. You mentioned the Keuchel beards and the shirts. Keuchel's corner that we just launched last week we had a very successful one. It's so much fun. There's so much energy in that corner yesterday. Everyone was so happy to wear their shirts and wear the beards and really support our ace. And to see fans come out in droves. And it was bad weather last night. I yeah, thought for sure bad. that it was going to kill the attendance in that section just because. I mean, frankly, I didn't know if people were going to be able to get here. But they were loud. They were proud. And they were well represented last night. And that was a lot of fun to see. That's a strike to Escobar, one on one. We were thinking back to that uh, time in the mid 70s when there was a rain in in the Astrodome. <laughs> I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> there were a couple spots that were getting a little iffy in here last night, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, there haven't been many Astros players who have started the All Star game down through history. Just a couple. In the dirt. Very well deserved coming off of a season as the AL batting champ having the season that he has had so far um, really just plays the game the right way. You can see it every day has truly taken on the leadership position on this team. And let's go Houston. Just let's think get ahead. him in there. Yeah. And think ahead. Uh, fast forward to next year. Christy this time. Maybe it'll be Astros fans who have seven players down to there start. And the shoe will be on the other foot. That would be something. <laughs> there might be a lot of raised eyebrows if that yeah, happens again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to get NASA involved. Yeah, something. Yeah. But just to recap, like I said, for tonight, since we're about out of this inning tonight, uh, make sure that you are voting 35 times, sending in your uh, screenshot with the hashtag vote Altuve to win a chance for a Yes Way Jose shirt that I am wearing right now, and then also to be entered for your chance for that shopping spree. Um, and then tomorrow, check out Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all platforms, but specifically on Twitter, all of these prizes, autographed Altuve baseball, Tickets in batting practice field passes, tickets in an orbit visit, Altuve autographed jersey, and the uh, grand prize of Diamond Club seats and dinner with Reed Ryan. Let's look ahead to after the All Star break. For those who do not know how to be a part of Keiko's corner, if he should pitch, and he might pitch, he may start the All Star game for all we know. Yes. And we hope he does. Absolutely. So perhaps he won't pitch that weekend after the All Star break, but. He might against the Texas Rangers here. So let's say somebody thinks he'll pitch that weekend wants to be a part of Keiko's Corner. What's the protocol? You should go to Astros.com forward slash Keiko's Corner. All of the information will be there as soon as we know when his next start date will be. The link will be available on sale. It's $35 for a game ticket in Keiko's Corner, a T-shirt, and a beard. So it will either be, I think, the Sunday of the Rangers or possibly that Boston series. But we'll let you know. Thanks, Christy, awesome. for joining us. Thank you very much. Vote, vote, vote. Vote out to you, <laughs> Better believe it. <laughs> and now the Astros.
and vote some runs on this scoreboard. They trail three to nothing. Need to get something going. They trail the Royce 3 or nothing. Make memories at an Astros ball game with family-friendly activities at every Sunday home game presented by Kroger. The next Sunday home game of the season is coming up July 19th when the Astros take on the Texas Rangers. For more information, go to astros.com slash Sundays or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Guys, back up to you. John Singleton takes on their strike one. Three to nothing, Kansas City. Singleton has a 167 average for six Astros at bats this season. 13 homers, 44 runs batted in for John with the Astros last year in a 168 batting average. He swings and it's 0-2. He's got such good arm action on that changeup. Fastball, curveball, changeup. He's got a great mix, and obviously we've seen early on that he's got great command of all of it too. Come on, John. Come on, John. Singleton had a double and two walks in the Monday night start against the Royals. Inside for ball one. Lopez was traded by Texas to Cincinnati after the 07 season in the Josh Hamilton deal. It was 17 and 6 for the Reds in 08. That's close, but a ball in two and two. And he was an all star that year in 08. Working 196 innings for the Reds. The next year, it was elbow surgery. The next year, 50 game suspension. And with San Diego in 2012, he returned to pretty good form 11 and 11 with a 414. In the dirt. Now Singleton has worked his way back from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Turned into a pretty good at bat. Saw some nasty pitches those first two to fall behind 0 and 2. I'd be ready for that fastball right here in that 3 2 count. He's got good movement on. He's also throwing it from low to mid 90s. That's strike three. Third strikeout. Well, in California, we got a word, and it's called gnarly. And that's why that thing is nasty coming back on that inside corner to left handed hitters. We've seen it twice already. Got Val Buena with a similar pitch down around the knees, and even when it's elevated around the belt, you see it coming at that front hip. Your tendency is to give up on it, but he's got such good run that it comes back over that inside corner. Preston Tucker's one for five with an RBI in this series. That's ball one to Tucker, 243 for Preston, four homers, 17 runs batted in. 
since May 17th Volquez is six and one with a three point one seven ERA. Bouncer to Volquez. Two outs. Marwin Gonzalez gets the start. A night off for Carlos Correa. His first night off since joining the Astros. He's hitting 287 for 94 major league at bats in 22 games. He's done very well getting a break tonight and then tomorrow is a travel day. The Astros travel to Boston. They'll resume play Friday night against the Red Sox. With a brand new Astro on the mound, Dan Straley. 240 for Marwin Gonzalez, playing shortstop tonight with four homers, 17 runs batted in. And it's strike one to Marwin. Marwin is one for six on this homestand. Jason Castro's on deck. It's 0 and 2. The Astros are second in winning percentage in the American League to Kansas City. But they lead in wins in the American League with 46. Kansas City has played fewer games. 74 games for the Royals, 80 games for the Astros. Kansas City won't have many days off between now and the rest of the season. That's a strikeout, and it's a 1 2 3 second for Volquez and a 3 0 Kansas City advantage. As we move to the third and the Astros have signed yet another draft choice. They have now signed all of their top 10 picks. I am joined now by second round choice Thomas Eshelman of Cal State Fullerton where he led the Titans into the College World Series this year. A right handed pitcher who had a terrific college career. In fact Mike Elias calls you one of the best college pitchers in the country over the last three years. That has to be good to hear because Elias doesn't pass out praise like that very often. Yeah it's it's humbling and uh, I'm just happy to be here happy to finally get this thing going and, and get down to the minor leagues and hopefully get here in the future. So tell us how it went for you on draft day uh, you're you're in the College World Series your team is playing and and but then you got the call what were your emotions like. Uh, it was unbelievable I had, I had just closing out the Super Regionals game to head to Omaha and and one of my coaches came over to me and said I got drafted by the Astros so. I mean I put my hands on my knees and started to tear up uh, but it's just an unbelievable feeling and uh, something I've worked for my whole life. Yeah, it's always fun to see somebody realize a lifelong dream because so many kids play this game and want to be where you are but it's got to feel great to finally get get that what you've been working for for so long. It is it's very humbling and it and only wants only makes me want to work harder in order to achieve my ultimate goal is to be a big leaguer. Well your numbers are really good we'll give the viewers some of those you pitched you went eight and five for Cal State Fullerton. In 137 innings, a 158 ERA, fourth in the nation in strikeouts with 139, and get this, just four walks. That command really is what had you on all the scouts' radar. That's your strength, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the thing that everyone always always wants to bring up, and it, it's just a, it's a funny feeling. I mean, it's just something I, I don't try to do, but it happens, and, uh, and it, it ultimately works for me. So it's something I, I could probably get better on in the future, as, as, especially facing these guys. I mean, obviously, you don't want to throw them a fastball right down the middle, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's a fun thing to talk about, that's for sure. So today's activities, you got to meet some of the guys, go out to the bullpen, watch a couple of the guys throw a bullpen, talk to Brett Strom, the pitching coach, a little bit. What was that like for you? I, it was fun. I mean, the whole the whole experience is just so surreal for me. I mean, coming from a San Diego, a little town in San Diego, to a, a town like Houston and, and a stadium like Minute Maid, is, it's very humbling, and it makes me want to work harder, like I said, to, to ultimately get here and play here. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. It's great to have Thomas Eshelman, right-handed pitcher from Cal State Fullerton, in the fold. Hopefully we'll see him up again here real soon. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Barn. Very nice young man. We enjoyed meeting him tonight before the game. Two balls and a strike to Lorenzo Kane after the pop-up. Moustakas popping to Marwin Gonzalez. 3-0. The Royals lead it. In the hole, but Valbuena gets there to his left. There is a nice stretch and a pickup on the short hop by John Singleton. Not bad. Sometimes as a third baseman, you're so used to getting on top of the ball, and you move this far to your left, you've got to kind of sling it over there. Creates a lot of sink. It's great range by Valbuena, but it's tough, so tough to square your shoulders up. How about the dig and the stretch? You're my boy. Two outs now, and it's Kendrys Morales. Homer to left field in the first inning. Robwin is going to move further to his left. Inside corner, strike one call. Salvador Perez on deck. There's a way the Astros move the infielders around for Morales. It's no balls, two strikes. The Yankees lead the Angels two to nothing in Anaheim. They're in the top of the sixth inning. Matt Shoemaker pitching for the Angels against Nate Baldy. And Garrett Jones has hit his fifth home run. Surprising resignation of the general manager of the Angels, Jerry DePoto, today. Her ball got Morales on strikes. That's strikeout number four for Vince Velasquez. And we go to the bottom of the third. Kansas City leads at three to nothing. Making their way back to their seats and hoping the Astros can show them some runs here. They got off to a nice start in the home first inning. Springer single. Altuve reached on an infield hit. But then Edison Volquez struck out Gaddis and Valbuena. And retired Carter on a deep drive to left center field, a 400 footer. 
Now it's Jason Castro leading it off in the home third inning. Castro, a 212 hitter with seven homers, has 18 runs batted in. Jason is 0 for 3 with an RBI in this series, 1 for 12 on the homestand with two runs batted in. Here's ball one to Castro. We talked about the Yankees having a 2 0 lead over the Angels in the sixth inning. The Rangers are trailing at Baltimore. It's 4 to 2 in the top of the eighth inning for Baltimore. Fly ball out toward the bullpen in right center field. Rios is out of room, but he just was there in front of that wall in right center for out number one. Time now for our TXU Energy Power player of the game. George Springer last night, one for three with a two run bomb. Making everybody happy, hitting it off that Chick fil A foul pole right there. It's good to see Georgia get, getting back into that power swing. We'd like to see him get a lot more knocks. It's been a rough stretch for him, but still has the bat speed to turn and burn. He line one off the glove of a leaping Escobar into left center field in the first inning. Strike one. Springer then stole third base on the double steal in the Astros first. And Volquez was up against it, but then he got tough. That pitch spins up high. It's one and one. The batting average against Volquez this year is 220. The Rangers are two games above 500. They trail the Astros by five. The Angels trail by four. Two balls and a strike. Kansas City swept the Angels in a three game series. And the Royals are three and four against Texas in their season series, which is over now. High drive left center field, a long run here for Dyson, and he once again goes 400 feet away to catch a fly ball. Out. It's actually a pretty good job by George Springer staying back. See the breaking ball, the foot gets down, but the hands stay back. And that allows him to drive this ball. Probably didn't get the trajectory he wanted to, but Gerard Dyson had a phenomenal jump getting back there in time to snack this. But those are good swings from George Springer. We saw the knock. Fighting that pitch off, getting the base hit up over Escobar's glove. Now a drive to that left center field gap. So it seems that things are starting to round back into form for him to start driving the ball again and getting on base. Jose Altuve got an infield hit earlier. Strike on a curve. How about the luxury that Royals have? Gerard Dyson is the backup fourth center, fourth outfielder, backup center fielder tonight. It's an excellent jump. Lorenzo Kane, also a great outfielder. Roller goes foul for Altuve. The hit for him in the first inning extended his hitting streak to 10 games. Since he returned to action on June 22nd, he had missed four games with discomfort in his hamstring. He's hit in every one. It's on to Boston next. Boston, Cleveland, and Tampa Bay on the 10 game road trip starting Friday night. And Straley will be arriving soon, maybe getting in tonight to join the Astros for that flight to Boston tomorrow. All the Boston starters are to be announced for that series. Colin McHugh goes Saturday, and Lance McCullers Sunday for Houston. Foul ball keeps the count at one and two. So Straley and AJ Hinch mentioned Straley will pitch. That game Friday night, and we'll also pitch in Cleveland. It's a great opportunity for Straley. Had a chance to watch him pitch against the Astros as an Oakland A. Good fastball, breaking ball combo. Got the experience at this level. Zube taps another one foul. Four major league seasons, 13 and 12 with a 4.54.
came from the Cubs in the trade for Dexter Fowler. There's a lot of people who say that 4.06 ERA in the PCL is actually a pretty good ERA. Yeah. Altuve, it's a roller, and here's Mustakas barehanding, no throw. Another infield hit, two of those tonight for Altuve. Eight straight had been set down by Volquez before that. Straley, a veteran right hander, you talked about taking a look at him against the Astros. And here's some of his stuff. There's some Castro there and Carter. Get a good idea. He, he gets a chance to get to that breaking ball. He's going to go to it. Looks like he spikes it a little bit, create a little like extra spin with that middle finger on it. Gatta struck out in the first inning. And there's strike one to Evan. Astros finished the month of June last night with a win. They won three in a row. And they wound up with a 15 and 14 record in June. They've had three straight months with winning records this year. They hadn't done that since 2010. These fans are uh, no buying tickets. Come, come out here and see your Astros. That's yeah. beautiful. It's a live shot. And this is the last home game for a long time, I think, until the 17th. We talked about it with the Rangers coming in. So that is a beautiful sight. No balls, two strikes, still plenty of baseball left. And some people may have been detoured a little bit by the weather problems around Houston during the day today. Or various other pursuits anyway. They're outside. They'll be in soon. It's always a good sign when school's out too. Don't have to worry about it. I know the parents are still going to work, but the kids take them out, entertain them a little bit. Yeah. Let them sleep in. Last year the Astros came out of the shoot with the first three months all ending in winning records was 0 1. That has not hurt one bit at the box office. Gavis is down on strikes. Number five. And in the third inning, no runs a hit and a man left. Three to nothing, Kansas City. The Royals 3 0. And now it's time for us to play a little game we like to call Name That Astro, brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Here's how it works we give you some clues, you see if you can figure out who it is, and in a couple of innings we'll give you the answer. Here we go. Originally drafted by the New York Yankees was this former Astro, attended Dartmouth College, career 251 average, three time gold glover, once managed the Israeli national team. 
think all that over, and we'll have the answer for you a little bit later in the game. If you think you know the answer and you want to tweet it to us, at Blummer27 is when you <laughs> said it. <laughs> <laughs> Did it to him again. Oh, I love it. All this attention. Salvador Perez leads it off in the fourth inning. 3 nothing Kansas City. Strike one for Vince Velasquez. Perez had a pop-up, and it was rather unusual, but Velasquez caught it while Singleton came in and brushed against him. They have this pitcher's fielding practice, of course, quite a bit in spring training. They work on pop-ups like that. But I'm not sure it involved boxing out the first baseman to make the play. Usually not like that. You're right. Foul ball. Salvador Perez has a one two count. Mike Tershley, the third base coach. Still showing some athleticism. Mm -hmm. Getting out of the way of that bullet. Well, the Royals will put away these road uniforms for a while now. Next 11 games at home that takes them up to the All Star break. And several Royals will be packing for Cincinnati the way it appears right now. Foul back. It's still a one and two count. Yeah, I think the Royals owner should just charter a private jet for all these guys and put them on there and take them on down to Cincinnati. Yeah, we were hearing that uh, whatever team they're playing, it's Toronto, uh, right before the break, which figures to have a few All Stars. Uh, we'll be combining, filling up a charter plane from Kansas City to Cincinnati with the Royals. Huh. The appeal went to first. It was a check swing call, two and two. So the charter's already been arranged by the Royals, but the Toronto club can ride along with however many All Star representatives they might have. It's going to be a big contingent of Kansas City players, their wives, uh, coaches of Ned Young. Yeah, they're so taking the entire staff, yeah, aren't they? That's, that's going to be a pretty well filled up airplane. Yeah, I believe they take their trainers down there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cool thing. Very nice reward. For a great year last year for the Royals. Fastball up, makes it three and two. To Salvador Perez. They just got so hot at the end of the year. And you know that all these teams that are hanging around 500, a few games under right now, will say are thinking about that very thing and the possibility that it might be their club this year. It doesn't seem likely to a lot of people. The former Reds general manager Jim Bowden wrote an article today on a website about. Uh, there are so many teams in contention. There aren't very many teams that are known to be sellers right now. But in another three or four weeks, they will. It's good talk in the public. And that's in the air to left field. Gannis drifting back for it. And it's foul. Yeah, the, the thought being you give it another. Well, the trade deadline's the 31st, so given another three weeks, we'll say, and those talks will be really heating up, getting close to the deadline. And uh, he thinks Jim Bowden does the Chicago Cubs might be the first team to trade for a starting pitcher. This will be the ninth pitch to Perez. Broken back. Velasquez goes over for it, but it's behind the dugout of Kansas City. Still three and two. He went for that pop up as if he really meant it. And yeah, that was interesting. Veteran pitchers, you see them conserve themselves a little bit more and not waste the energy sprinting over to a ball that's 15 rows back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roy Oswald would just look over at me and scream at me. Why aren't you running after it? <laughs> you know. Well, Roy, by the way, was the last Astros pitcher to win 10 games before the All-Star break. He was 12 and 7 at the break in 05. And Dallas Keuchel joined him. That's strike three call. Perez went right back for the home plate umpire, Paul Emmel, and they are toe to toe now. 
Strikeout number five for Velasquez, but Perez is making a strong point. And Ned Yost will come out. Well, just to the naked eye, I thought it was a strike, Brownie. Okay. Three-two count. We'll Salvador, you. Salvador Perez is looking for that fastball in that three-two count from a flamethrower like Velasquez, and he just does a great job of painting, painting that lower outer third. At least one seam caught that corner. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Five strikeouts now. And Alex Gordon will follow. He singled a right field in the second and came around to score. Three runs on four hits for the Royals, no runs on three hits for the Astros. That's him for a strike. There's the changeup. We have not seen a lot of that pitch, but it's a very good one for Vince. And he eases it in on the first pitch of the sequence to Gordon. In the air, and that backs up Springer. Two down. Take a look back at that changeup, Lover. Yeah, you can see those three fingers on the outside of the hand. That's called the circle change. And that's just a great pitch. It's a good arm action. And I think if you've got an electric fastball like Velasquez, a great pitch to back that up with is the changeup because the arm, if you can get the same arm action on it, it's going to be extremely deceptive when you pull that string and take a little bit of those miles per hour off it. You either get the take like you saw on Alex Gordon or you see a big swing and miss. Rios gets underneath it. Out to the out, but Springer is moving in. And that's a low pitch inning in the fourth. It's three to nothing, Royals. Houston Methodist is going to help us get to know Luis Valbuena. See what he's got. Profession other than baseball. Teacher. It's a noble profession to go into. One quality from another player. Miguel Cabrera's confidence. A lot of that goes with the tools he's got too, huh? Yes, it does. Big fan of reggae. Valbuena try to get things started for the Astros here in the home fourth inning. They trail three to nothing. That's low ball one. He struck out looking with two men on in the first after the double steal had put Springer and Altuve at second and third. Volquez has been facing the Astros since 08. Ground ball backhanded. Morales one out. He is in control of this game after giving up the singles to Springer and Altuve. He retired eight in a row. Then another infield hit to L2 and struck out Gaddis. Now he has Valbuena and he faces Chris Carter. He hit a deep drive just to the left of the 404 sign in left center field in the first inning with two men on. 
Last time Volquez faced the Astros, he was a Padre. That game was against Lucas Harrell in San Diego. He won it one to nothing on a one hitter. That was an infield hit by Matt Downs in the fourth inning. That was his first career complete game. And he had a combined one hitter. And he was with Cincinnati against Houston. He went the first eight. That was in a three nothing win. Miguel Tejada had the only hit for the Astros in that one. Ball one to Carter. So a guy like Volquez, it's been a few years, three, since he's faced the Astros. He's six and zero with a 2.09 ERA against Houston Lifetime. How well aware of that is he? Oh, he's very well aware. He's got great numbers in this ballpark too. Undefeated out here, 2.18 ERA here at Minute Maid. It's, he's got great numbers and he he definitely knows it. I think as a ball player, if you've had success anywhere, you felt comfortable there. You knew your numbers were good. Maybe not to the specifics that we talk about, but they definitely know where they pitch well, where they hit well. Who they hit well off of, who they own. Mm -hmm. Over the last cal calendar year, he's 15 and 5 with a 2.58 ERA, one of the best pitchers in baseball. He has a 7.50 winning percentage in that span. That's third in the majors. Only Garrett Cole of Pittsburgh and Colin McHugh of Houston are better. Handed an early three to nothing lead and has the game's best bullpen to back him up. Punch foul out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Astros have won the last five from Kansas City. They swept the Royals in Kansas City, and right after that, Kansas City started to turn it on and made that drive to reach the playoff spot. That was a stretch where you saw George Springer doing incredible things, basically carrying this Astros team. High to left field. This one's going to go left and into the seats. Carter with number 15. That gets the Astros on the board, trailing 3 1. It was headed for left center, and it developed a little tail on it to get into those Landry's Crawford boxes. That's 39 runs batted in for Carter. He just missed one in his first at bat that would have tied up this ball game early on, giving the Astros a three run jack. But here, with nobody on, fights off some tough pitches, gets a breaking ball, smashes it into the Crawford boxes, and that's his 100th career home run. Number 100 for the big fella. It's a big moment in his career. John Singleton takes strike one. Colby Rasmus has rejoined the team. Just saw a shot of him down on the bench. Well, that's a good sign. Just got out of the hospital after treating an infection there. Singleton moves back from it. It's one and one to John. 100 career bombs for Carter. He hit 37 last year. He was pounding the ball all through the month of August. One and two on the off speed pitch from Volquez. If he does that again this year, it's going to be a very interesting month of August because he has a lot of reinforcements on hand. That would be a huge addition to this lineup having Chris Carter get hot. Two balls, two strikes. That was the sixth long ball surrendered by Volquez this year in 94 innings. Two ball, two strike count rather to John Singleton with Tucker on deck. 
you realize that was seven years ago. Volquez faced the Astros for the first time in his career. He gave up homers to Hunter Pence and Ty Wigginton in that game. Wiggy takes you back a little bit. Singleton's a strikeout victim. That's number six. Back to that home run by Chris Carter. Breaking ball backed up. Stayed on that inner third. And if you throw an off speed pitch, you can see he spiked with that index finger, putting the emphasis on the middle finger to create that spin. Just not enough. Ran back into the barrel of Chris Carter. And that's all it takes. The man is strong enough, literally, just to push that ball out of here. Ooh, that could be a sign of what we saw last year. It could be good times in the middle of that lineup. Well, that first ball he hit in the first inning was hit 400 feet. He's had a couple of good swings tonight. The strike one to Tucker. Carter had not faced Volquez before tonight. No balls, two strikes. Royal starters have only the 12th best ERA in the American League, 4.41. They're 32 and 26, but if they can leave the game with a lead after six innings, they're in very good shape. That's out toward the right field corner. Rios coming over. Up against the wall, it's out of play. Well, the Astros did a job in the draft this year. Now they've signed everybody for the first 10 rounds. And they've been pretty economical about it, too. Using that money wisely. I thought they did a great job in the draft period. Now they're bringing these guys on by signing them. And they're signing early enough to get them into the program and start their process. True. They really moved the money around. Going over slot with Daz Cameron. Some other players took less than slot money to sign, including the first overall pick. In the air to center field. Lorenzo Cain with uh, Dyson with a catch, and Carter's home run is 15th of the year. Gets the Astros on the board, trailing 3 to 1 in the fourth. Beautiful evening inside Minute Maid Park, and this pitching performance is powered by Kubota. Dallas Keuchel's homestand. Why wouldn't it be? The last two starts, he's only gotten 17 shutout innings. Looking at some highlights from that complete game shutout against the New York Yankees. Then he backed it up with an eight-inning performance of shutout baseball against the Kansas City Royals, making a bid for that starting spot in the All-Star game in front of. Royals manager and all-star manager for the American League, Ned Yost. With that game last night, he is now the ERA leader in the American League at 2.03. Sonny Gray is second at 
two point zero nine. Sonny had to check into the hospital. Omar Infante, the batter, and he missed his start last night because of an illness. And Fonte takes ball one. Vince Velasquez has retired nine in a row after the Rios RBI single in the second, keeping this game close. In the air to right field. Tucker comes over. Preston has played mostly left this year. That's out number one. Really helps to have outfielders who have played the various positions in the minor leagues when they're called up. Really does. You don't want them to panic once they get up here. It's kind of a tough time to make the transition with some of these different ballparks you're going to go into. But AJ Hinch is one of the few managers around the major leagues and has such a luxury of having great athletes to play the outfield. This is the first start in right field this season with the Astros for Tucker. Gerard Dyson struck out in the second inning. Now Buenos in tight as is first baseman Singleton. There's strike one. But Velasquez gave up a two out triple to Kane. Back to back with a two run homer by Kendris Morales in the first inning. The single to Rios in the second was the second hit of that frame. He has slammed the door since then on this Kansas City club. One ball, one strike. A club which is 10th in runs scored in the American League. If he can keep the line right here for a while, the Astros who are playing confident baseball have a chance to overtake Kansas City before that bullpen does become a bigger factor. Yeah, I'd like to see him take advantage of Volquez before they get into that bullpen. There's a definite dividing line. This Kansas City club after the sixth inning. Not to say the starters are chopped liver, but it gets a whole lot tougher. Two balls and a strike. And it's two and two to Dyson. Brewers lead the Phillies eight to four. They are in Philadelphia tonight. Wow, that's impressive. Way to go, Altuve. Uh, or but with a strong campaign this week. He's relentless. So a lot of thought into this home stand. Three balls, two strikes. Adam Lind hit his 12th homer of the year for the Brewers tonight. Aaron Harang got lit up for the Phillies in five innings, allowing 14 hits, eight earned runs. Struck him out looking. That is six punch outs. Doing a good job of locating, falling behind in a couple of these 3 2 counts, but able to make the pitch when it counts and getting a little help from some friends. Oh, Emil opening up the zone a little bit. And I guess this day and age, you got to give Castro a little bit of love for framing that up nicely. Now go on his resume. Catcher's pitch framing very carefully tracked. Alcides Escobar is 0 for 2. The Royals go back home, and tomorrow night they begin that 11 game homestand we talked about. They'll be playing the Twins in a four game holiday weekend series. Twins are their closest pursuers right now. There's ball one, and they are four and a half games out. The Twins played at Cincinnati today, so that was four and a half before the Twins lost 2 to 1 to the Reds today. The air out to right center field. Springer moving for it. And Tucker moved out of the way for out number three. Now this is quite a roll. That's 12 straight retired by Vince Velasquez. Three to one Royals.
of the fifth, and it's time for our progressive fan of the game fans tonight as David and Christina Halata are celebrating their ninth wedding anniversary here at an Astros game. Congratulations. Thank you. Christina, let's start with you. What's the secret to nine blissful, wonderful, happy years? Sometimes you just have to grin and bear it. Words to live by. And introduce your two children. Uh, this is William, who is four years old, and Elena, who is seven. And we have a three-month-old at home watching with her grandma on TV, Caroline. So you guys obviously are huge Astros fans. Huge Astros fans forever, yeah. yes. And you drive up to the game from where? Pallettsville, Texas. Pallettsville. Yes. So this is not an easy trek for you to come to the game. Not when it's raining and you're on 59, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are so thrilled to have you here celebrating the anniversary with us. Happy anniversary to Thank you. you. And congratulations you. for being our Progressive Insurance fans of the games. They're also big Corpus Christi Hooks fans, as you can see from the gear they're wearing on their heads, Brody. Well, they are following two outstanding teams this year. So that's great that they're with us. Thank you, Bart. Three to one here with the Astros batting in the fifth inning. And Marwin Gonzalez has a 1 1 count against Edinson Volquez, who gave up a Chris Carter homer in the fourth. Meanwhile, the Indians right hander Carlos Carrasco has a no hitter through eight at Tampa Bay with the Indians leading at eight to nothing. A strike makes it one and two. Volquez has struck out six. Jason Kipnis with two hits tonight for the tribe. He's hitting 348 with an OPS well above 900. And yet he's not close to the lead in the all star voting for the American League at second base. Marwan grounds it foul. Bill Stoneman is taking over as the Angels general manager. Yeah, it's official. What an amazing turn of events out there in L.A. of Orange County. Yeah, very quick disconnect. Man, Jerry Depoto leaving the job. Apparently, uh, he and Mike Sosha and the coaching staff not seeing eye to eye on how to use the analytical information and pass it along to the players. That's a shot to right field. That one will get out. Now three to two. Marlon Gonzalez, number five. That's the 34th multi-home run game for the Astros this year. And the distribution throughout the lineup has really brought problems to opposing pitchers. That's 18 runs batted in for Marlon Gonzalez. I'll tell you what, H-Town is becoming smash town. These guys are crushing the baseball. Putting on a display here at home. Fastball that leaks out over the play. We saw some of the fastballs from Volquez trying to sneak over that inner third. This one leaks out over the plate. Marwin Gonzalez drops the barrel on it nicely. He knew it. Head down. It's a good sign. Now one run lead. Jason Castro the batter. There's ball one. He hit a warning track drive to right center field earlier. The starting pitcher has provided a chance for the Astros to come back and win this game. Velasquez. Now it's 2 0. Now just a one run lead for Kansas City with George Springer on deck. Now back. Apologies to. Cody Sensing got in touch via Twitter. He says, I left him hanging during the broadcast last night, Lumber, and I did. I said, Have you heard about Joe Thatcher's son? Never answered the question. The answer is, he's really cute. <laughs> You're a pleaser, Brownie. Two and one. Well, the story I was telling a few weeks ago about him was he was in the clubhouse. He's not yet two years old. We had a shot of a little girl with a teething ring in her mouth last night, and that's what reminded me of him. So Joe Thatcher's son had the teething ring in his mouth, and he was firing pellets at his dad in his locker. <laughs> that's a walk to Castro after the homer. George Springer coming to the dish. Look what he's done on the day. Fastball on that inner third, middle and up. Does a good job of staying inside it. This ball 
leaked back over the middle. It was a hanging breaking ball. He did a good job of keeping his hands back. And to give you an idea, we've talked about the struggles that George has had here recently in about a week or so. But when he was going good, he would see the pitches on the left that he was hitting extremely well. A little more hot zones. But that one zone on that middle end that we talked about is the one he got the base hit on. Seeing the ball well right there. And also that home run he hit the other day was a fastball in a little bit that he turned on quite well. But with him going back up towards the middle is going to give him a little bit more time to see that baseball and put some good swings on it. Now back there's strike one. Springer with a single off the shortstop's glove on a looping line drive in the first inning. And then a warning track fly ball to center field in the third. Finale of a very good homestand. Astros are four and two. They split the four games with the Yankees. They won the first two from the defending American League champion Royals. That one hit him. Springer writhing in pain. That is not good. Anything around the hands. I don't like the reaction either. Nate Lucero, the head athletic trainer, accompanies George up the first baseline, along with A.J. Hinch. Take a look at it on the Super Bowl. Two, two seamer running up and in. See the hands coming forward. Catches him on that right wrist. And again, that's a lot of bone in that area. Nerve endings going to that hand. Nowhere for that swelling to go. It'll be interesting to see how George comes out of this, but that was nasty. 95 miles per hour. And it did it wasn't a glancing blow. It squared him up. Doing some testing on his hand strength. And he is staying in the game. Springer hit by the pitch. It's been a homer, a walk, and a hit batter for Volquez in this inning. That's the third time Springer has been hit by a pitch. Fifth hit batsman this year for Volquez. And Altuve will try to build on it. He has two infield hits tonight. Stockus is in very close at third. And Gaddis on deck. That's strike one. So the Royals apparently thinking up to they may try to lay one down. See his numbers with runners in scoring position. Well, that's the man can hit. Yeah, that would indicate that might not be a solid thought right now. 319 on the season. Yeah, it's easier to hit the ball by the third baseman where he is. It's one and one. Well, that's a good thing. If you're a threat to punt, you can bring that third baseman in. It opens up all kinds of holes. 319. 25 runs batted in of his total of 32 have come with men in scoring position. He's had 47 at bats. Somebody at second or second and third or third. One and two now to Altuve. He's going to have to try to fight for contact. And Stockus will back up at third now. That's just a crazy run on that two seamer from Volquez. So tough as a hitter not to give up on that pitch when it leaks back over the plate. Like to see Altuve if he gets another one, just punch it to that right side. Ground ball up the middle into center field. Here's the go ahead from Gary Pettis. And the throw goes to third. Safe in the run scores to tie it, and Altuve hustles into second. A big two strike hit for Altuve, his third hit of the night. Drives in his 33rd of the year to tie it at three. Castro coming home to score. 
Ringer into third with good hustle and out to the end of second. And that's that fastball that came back over. Altuve thinking the same thing, able to shoot this one back up the middle. Castro got a great jump, seeing the early bounce on that ground ball. Scores easy. Thought it was a pretty interesting throw from Gerard Dyson, throwing that ball on the run to third base. Got rid of it quick, but there really wasn't much on the throw, allowing George Springer and all of his speed to beat that throw into third base. That was pretty close. And how about the intuitiveness of Altuve to advance to second base, getting into scoring position? Excellent base running. Astros are playing fundamentally sound, productive baseball right now. Really hustling on the bases. Runners at second and third for Evan Gaddis. Four straight Astros have reached base. They've tied it at three. Now Gaddis, who has struck out both times, will try to give them the lead. Bouncer goes foul. Time now for our Geico quote of the day. Seven Gaddis on hitting four triples this year. Yeah, wouldn't have predicted it, but whatever, I'll take them. Of course, it'd be nice to jog a couple. I haven't hit a home run. I've got like one in I don't know how many weeks. Good thing he's in shape, huh? Nice two run single would be helpful here. He's out in front of the change, and it's 0 2 to Gaddis. Franklin Morales, a left-hander, has begun to warm up for Kansas City. Seems like some of the nastiest sliders Volquez has thrown today have been to Evan Gaddis. Line drive into right center, and the Astros will take the lead, five to three. Here's the throw into second. Gaddis in, but he is going to be out. A 5 to 3 lead. The count was 0 and 2, and Gaddis hit it hard into right center field. He was thrown out from 9 to 6, but nonetheless, the Astros, with their first five men reaching base, have come from behind to take the lead. Seen some sliders fluttering and a couple nasty ones. To Evan Gaddis, but the man does such an unbelievable job of keeping his nose on that baseball, watching it get deep, putting the barrel on it. And of course, with a couple runners on, he loves the RBI. How about Buena showing butt? Takes a strike. He's 0 for 2. Another tremendous comeback by the Astros. They trailed 3 to nothing after an inning and a half. Now they're up 5 to 3 in the fifth. Bounce foul and it's 0 and 2. And Edinson Volquez, who had the terrific record against them, finally gets an out on a play at second. He tried to force it a little bit. Yes. Tried to pull up a little bit, but that was a great tag. Escobar on the tag to play 9 to 6. Well, Buena swings at that one. It's a strikeout, but he might be able to beat the throw from Perez. He does not. Morales, as first baseman of trained to do, set up the target in foul territory. That's strikeout number seven. And now two outs for Carter. It's good communication, solid fundamentals on the Kansas City defense. How about the arm from Perez all the way from the backstop at first? Big time arm. He's got a good one. Carlos Carrasco's one out away from a no hitter for Cleveland at Tampa Bay. Chris Carter with ball one. Homered in the fourth. That was the first run for the Astros. Prior to that, they had only three base runners, all on singles, two of them infield hits. It's Tuna. Volquez started this game with a lifetime record against Houston of 6 and 0 with a 2.09 ERA. The third time through the order this year, the batting average increases to 300 against. 
Joey Butler singled with two outs in the ninth for Tampa Bay to break up the no hitter on a two strike count. Carlos Carrasco. Two and one. It's too bad. Great effort. Carrasco with a terrific arm. Carter. Two balls, two strikes to Chris. The Indians were here for that first series, and Carrasco pitched against the Astros. Game two of the season. That was the eighth of April. We shut them out for six and a third with ten strikeouts. Ooh. I just got word that Carrasco and Keichel on Monday in Cleveland. Ooh, boy. Strikeout of Carter. That's number eight for Volquez. But what a rally for the Astros. Marlon Gonzalez started it with a homer on a one-two count. Evan Gaddis gave them the lead with a two-run single on an 0-2 count. It's five to three, Astros. Back to Minute Maid Park. We moved to the sixth, and the Astros have stormed back to take the lead here. And in honor of that, we're going to wrap up Name That Astro, brought to you by your local Honda dealer. We gave you the clues earlier. I'll give them to you one more time. He originally was drafted by the New York Yankees. He attended Dartmouth College, career 251 average, three time gold glover, and once managed the Israeli national team. Who is that Astro? Well, if you said former catcher Brad Osmus. You were correct. Osmus, one of the best catchers in franchise history, and everybody knew that Osmus would make a good manager one day. That has proven to be true up in Detroit, guys. Very good manager. Thanks, Bart. Five to three Astros. Vince Velasquez shooting for his first major league win. Has set down 12 in a row. Mike Mustakas takes, and there's ball one. He is 0 for 2 in this game and 0 for 10 in this series. And Velasquez has left. Two of his four starts with leads. After qualifying, he had one uh, in which he left with a two to one lead, but had only pitched three and a third innings. But has not been fortunate enough to notch that first major league win. He left start number one in Chicago against the White Sox, leading one to nothing after five. The Astros lost it 4 1. His last start was against the Yankees here. He had a two nothing lead when he departed. With one out in the seventh and two men on base, they later scored. So another no decision. He has four no decisions in a row to start his career. My goodness. Is Bart okay? Hopefully. He does have quick reactions. That was an absolute missile going into that camera well. Mm. Careful down there. My goodness. Velasquez is one of 10 pitchers since 1914 to begin a career with four straight no decisions. It's amazing. There have only been 10 of those guys. 
2 0. Yeah, four is not a big number. You think there'd be a couple more? True. Major League record is five consecutive no decisions to start a career. That's the record. The Dale Nomo did it, Mark Valdez and Chris Brock. Vince does not want to join that group tonight. Now Mustakis has worked the count full. I've actually seen Velasquez throw his breaking ball and his fastball in these three two counts and was able to locate it extremely nicely. Bouncer. Altuve. Singleton gets over to the base. Stop this wasn't running hard. Man, he wasn't at all. Nope. That could have been because Singleton broke for the ball an opportunity. For a misplay there, but Stockus, by not running hard, gave the Astros all kinds of time to regroup. How about the fact that Velasquez is mixing it up so well today? That is the difference, isn't it? It's it's a great sign from a young kid developing, moving on, maturing, listening to his coaches, listening to his catcher. But the fact that he's throwing a couple of those breaking balls in three two counts tells me he's got some confidence, and there's some numbers on the right hand side above the strike zone. You see 53% fastballs we saw earlier in the game. We put up a number that said he threw it 77% of the time in his last start. So it's a game of adjustments. We've seen a, a couple of good change ups, but that breaking ball has gotten him some big outs. That's a pitch he was only throwing 20% of the time in his first four starts. He really ramped that up tonight. Lorenzo Kane, the batter. That's strike one. Kane ripped a fastball for a triple in the first inning. Grounded out in the third. One ball, one strike. The Astros have had a lot of measuring sticks along the way. This will be the halfway point of the season after this game tonight. Certainly, this is a big one. Playing the team with the best winning percentage in the American League in this series. The shot up the left field line. It's hooking and going foul. If they sweep this series, they're going to get some headlines. It's going to put a lot of people on notice. AJ Hinch's club now 12 games over 500, trying for its fourth straight win. On to Boston next. Flick foul, and as great as it would be to sweep a three game series from the Royals, it wouldn't do much good if a bad series happened in Boston, right? It could cancel out some gains, so that's the, the mantra in that Astros clubhouse. Just put that way in the rearview mirror if it does happen. Night, refocus and move on. Yeah, and sometimes that's had trouble with a young team, but at the same time, ignorance is bliss. These guys haven't been in the situation. They like to win. They are winning. And AJ's job is to keep them winning. Astros with 416 losses the last four years. Would like to do some making up for that this year. More and more people are signing on to the belief that they can do it. Somebody brought up the fact the other day, Blummer, that both this team were still in the NL Central, the way the Cardinals are playing, there wouldn't be much of a chance of winning that division. Off the end of the bat. That's into shallow center field for a single for Kane, and that had been 13 straight retired by Velasquez. The Astros face off against their in state rivals, the Rangers, in a three game series July 17th to the 19th. On Friday, the 17th, 10,000 fans will receive a Lone Star Series replica silver boot presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. 
For tickets, call 1-877-9ASTROS or visit astros.com. Well, we've been waiting for rivalries to develop since moving to the American League. Now this year, the way the Astros and Rangers have played, looks like this year really has the makings of that development of that rivalry. Yeah, two teams playing well, chasing the same pennant will create that rivalry. Not only state pride on the line, but the AL West. Kendris Morales ripped a homer in the first. He struck out in the third. Velasquez up by two, throws to first base. There's some stirring in the Astros' bullpen. He is only at 76 pitches tonight. 54 have been strikes. And there's the way it looks in the AL West. Rangers just sent down Joey Gallo. And Josh Hamilton returned from his injury. Slowly hit Balbuena tossing and there is the middleman Marwin Gonzalez. That's interesting a five six three double play from short range. No runs a hit and the Astros get their 74th double play of the year to maintain their five to three lead. Root Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. George Springer was hit by a pitch on the right wrist area. He's been examined on the Astros bench, trying to grip that bat. As John Singleton comes up in the home sixth inning. Yeah, that's going to be tough. It's the top hand. The bottom hand is the one that. Kind of guides or aims the bat towards the ball. It's that top hand that provides all that power, and that's what also the hand that absorbs most of the impact when you do make contact. So, not only is it going to be tough to squeeze it, but it's going to be tough to make it contact. Strike to Singleton. He has struck out twice. Somebody brought a broom tonight. Clever. There's a shot on the ground. It goes into right field. Singleton leads it off against Volquez. That's a single for yet another Houston hit number eight. And now Ned Yost is on his way out. Just seeing some of these pitches flatten out a little bit. Some hanging breaking balls, hanging changeups. This was just a hanging fastball that leaked out over the plate. The velocity was a little bit down on it also. Quite a disappointing time tonight for Edinson Volquez, who came out of the shoot with a 3 0 lead. He still led 3 0 going to the home fourth. He has never lost to the Astros. It's 5 3 Houston here in the sixth inning. Back in a moment.
number six. And it's time now for our AT&T call to the bullpen. For the Kansas City Royals, Francisco Morales coming out of it, left-hander, formerly of the Colorado Rockies. Good live arm. See the numbers, making his 32nd appearance. Good whip under one. Lefty's having a tough time hitting them. Righty's having a tougher time. Still throws hard. Fastball averaging around 92, 93 miles an hour. He's got a little bit of a cutter. Curve ball and a split finger. 29 years old, Morales began his career in the Colorado organization. He was in Boston for a while. He inherits the runner at first, Singleton. The batter is Tucker. Preston 0 for 2. Marwin Gonzalez on deck. Looks like George Springer is lobbying the manager to stay in this game. Despite his injury, there's ball one. This Royals bullpen is the best in the majors with a 2.05 ERA and a 12 and 4 record. Ryan Madsen's warming up. Fine shot in the right field by Tucker. Beautiful swing. Well, that's a great at bat against the hard throwing lefty. And that is a similar swing that we saw from Preston Tucker when he first got called up. Nice and level through the zone. Ready early, quiet front side, sets that foot down nice and gently, and then just turns on that fastball. Singleton the second, and the Astros, who didn't do much hitting in the first three innings, now have let the bats fly in the middle three. Royals are talking about possible punt situation here. First and second, nobody out. Marwin Gonzalez already has a home run under his belt in this game, but you never have too many runs. And if you can move two runners 90 feet closer and put them both in scoring position, you're going to do it. Marwin, as a right handed batter, is hitting 274. He started the night 219 lefty, but Hit that home run in the fifth inning you talked about. He's one for two tonight. No signs of a butt and it's strike one with Castro on deck. Now that's the other thing. If he bunts, the number nine hitter Castro is up there lefty on lefty. It's an excellent point. That could be why Marwin is swinging the bat along with the numbers you just threw out there of him swinging the bat well right handed. Franklin Morales worked a scoreless seventh on Sunday at Oakland. He left the tying run at third after a double by Billy Burns. Oh, he got hit by that one, but he swung at it, so it's a strike. My goodness, a painful strike. Yeah, that's insult to injury right there. Yikes. Sometimes you overcommit a little too early. This ball was just a tracer coming right at Marwin Gonzalez and squared him up on that right quad. Ouch. Well, that sharp late break got him on the right thigh, and he's back hitting with an 0-2 count now. That reminds me of the time I faced Kerry Wood. That strike three call out number one. What happened with Kerry and you? We were in Wrigley Field and Jimmy, I was playing for the Astros actually, and Jimmy Williams was the manager and it was it was a reasonably tight situation, runner on first and second, and he threw me a absolute turbo you know, you you've seen that turbo slider he has down and in. I swing over the top of it and from the dugout it looks like it hits the dirt and goes to the backstop. Jimmy Williams is yelling because the umpire punched it out, called the ball dead. And as he's coming out, I'm like, Jimmy, man, that ball hit me. I'm like, you got to go back in the dugout. You're going to make this worse than it is, man. And he's like, what? How does the pitch hit you? You swung at it. I said, Jim, it was nasty. I missed it by a mile. It hit my back foot. Let's just go back in the dugout and hope nobody noticed. Because <laughs> the runners couldn't advance, and he was upset. And I was like, nope, that was my fault. I'm going to take it, but let's just try and move on from here. <laughs> Strike to Castro. <laughs> He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Little roller goes to first. 
Morales with the toss to Morales. And that's out number two. The runners advancing. We get a pinch hitter now. And it's going to be Santana for Springer. So George was not successful in his lobbying attempts to stay in this game. Bingo Santana will pinch hit for George Springer. Ed Yost is coming out. Probably to counter with a right handed reliever. He's had Madsen warming up. Springer appears to be all right on the bench, but he's been taken out of this game after getting a hit and hit by a pitch. Still doing some testing on the bench with a score of five to three. Houston back in a moment. in this Astros lineup. George Springer with that bomb going the other way. He's been doing it on the offensive side, getting a chance to play out there in center field. A couple of good diving grabs coming in. Jose Altuve, two bombs on this home stand. This is one of them. And then that stat cast running about 120 feet to make that catch. And the always electric youngster, Carlos Correa with a bomb. Also flashing some leather, taking away hits. Sign of things to come with this Young trio that they have here in Houston. Altuve, the mainstay, locked up for a couple more years with that contract. George Springer looking to get back in the swing of things. And Carlos Correa setting the rookie standard so far in that month of June. Domingo Santana is the pinch hitter. And the relief pitcher is Ryan Madsen. And two big runs potentially on base right now. There are two outs here in the sixth inning. Santana pinch hitting for Springer. Santana at 257 for 35 at bats has nine hits, two of them homers. He's driven in eight. And he has hit a pinch homer in his only pinch hit at bat. Altuve on deck. Madsen deals and there's strike one from the veteran right hander who worked to one batter last night. And he retired George Springer in relief of Danny Duffy in the seventh inning. One and one with a 1.74 ERA. 145 for the right handed batters against him. That's an excellent change up. One one for Madsen who's 34 years old. They don't care much about that. Oh, they just care about that scoreboard right now. In the dirt. Two balls, one strike. Singleton led off with a single. Tucker followed with a single. Strike out of Marwin Gonzalez. Then they both advanced on the rollout by Castro. First baseman to pitcher covering. Astros have out hit the Royals 9 5. Trying to add to their lead here in the sixth. 
upstairs for Domingo Santana. Much more relaxed than he was a year ago in his first trip to the big leagues. Santana is three for five with runners in scoring position and two outs. That's a beautiful number. Three and two now to Domingo. He's 22 years old from the Bahamas. The Phillies signed him in 08 and he was traded to Houston as part of the Hunter Pence deal. Along with the guy who's on third base, John Singleton, Jared Kozar, and Josh Zide. And it's a strikeout, and that ends the sixth inning with no runs, two hits, and two men left. After six, five to three, Astro. They lead 5-3. This moment in history brought to you by M.D. Anderson. George Brett had one of the most prolific seasons in Major League Baseball history in 1980. Hitting 390 with an OPS of 1.118. Driving in 118 runs in just 117 games. He was hitting an even 400 until September 19th of that year. And led the Royals to the World Series. 390. 390. I don't think I ever had it. On base percentage at 390. Not even the first week of the season. Yeah, I can shut it down after that and sit on my numbers. <laughs> That's incredible. That was one big time season. Salvador Perez up here in the seventh inning. He's 0 for 2. 5 3 Astros. Velasquez starts him with a curve and it's ball one. Velasquez got a double play ball from Morales to win the Royals sixth inning. So he has faced the minimum since the second. Runs it inside and moves him back off the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Velasquez is shooting for his first major league win. Still under 80 pitches for the night. Very economical so far. Rides that one up high, and it's 3 and 0. It's been fun to watch. He's showing a good mix of pitches. But still, you see the velocity on that fastball still hovering around 93, 94 miles an hour, which is a good sign on that young arm. Domingo Santana is playing center field for George Springer. Pinch hitting for him. That's ball four. A four pitch leadoff walk to Perez. Now the potential tying run comes to the plate. First walk for Velasquez. <laughs> Another great sign. First walk. Josh Fields warming up. Luke Gregerson's doing some loosening there. Windmilling. Brent Strom with a slow walk to the mound. We're looking at Santana in center field, as we mentioned. You might be wondering about Colby Rasmus, but he's been in the hospital. 
And he does not have a lot of strength right now and the Astros do not intend to play him in this game. So the Astros really don't have a true center fielder. Domingo has been primarily a corner outfielder. Evan Gaddis is not a center fielder. Preston Tucker has been a corner outfielder. There's Colby on the bench. That's a good sign having him in the yard. By the way, speaking of true center fielders, Jake Marisnik is playing for Triple A Fresno tonight in El Paso on an injury rehab assignment. And he could be catching up with the club this weekend in Boston if things go really well. Alex Gordon singled to right and scored in the second. He had a fly ball to center in the fourth inning. Yankees three, Angels one, bottom of the ninth inning in Anaheim. Angels have been following a similar path to the Astros in recent days. They trailed Houston by four. And strike one call. Swings through it. It's 0 and 2. Usually we have to wait for the Angels' home results after the Astros are finished. So they had the early start. In Anaheim tonight. That was nice of them. Very nice. 25,818. He paid attendance for this Astros game from Minute Maid Park. Yeah. Foul back. What they've seen has been a 3 0 lead for Kansas City. Two run homer by Morales in the first, an RBI single by Rios in the second. And then the Astros started their comeback with the Carter home run in the fourth. Marwin Gonzalez hit a solo shot in the fifth, and that touched off a four run inning to get them into the lead 5 to 3. Evan Gaddis breaking the tie with a two run single to right center field. Throw goes to first. Perez is back. Yeah, you got to keep him close. Salvador may take off. Well, yeah, and it may hail on our way home too. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Upstairs, one and two. Seattle beat San Diego seven to nothing this afternoon in San Diego. Taiwan Walker winning his seventh. James Shields the loser. Shields goes to seven and three. Cano hit his fifth and Cruz his twentieth. Check swing call goes the Royals way. Two and two on the ruling by Jordan Baker at third. Vince Velasquez. Missed two months of last season at Class A Lancaster with a groin injury. He pitched a total of 55 innings last year. So managing his innings is going to be one of the big decisions for the Astros from here to the rest of the season. End of the season. Foul back. And the same thing can be said of managing Lance McCullers' innings. Yeah, there's two guys in that rotation where AJ's got to be real careful. Right now, this arm is looking live and nice. It looks like Alex Gordon is on that, but watch where that pitch is down around the label. As a hitter, you try and play that off like, oh, yeah, I'm on his fastball, but in your head, you're going, man, I'm glad I didn't square that up and shatter my bat into a thousand pieces. Swing and a miss, and he got it. That's strikeout number seven for Velasquez. That was a great pitch selection. I, I'm going to give some credit to Jason Castro for calling that, realizing that Alex Gordon fouled that ball off the label, probably in his head, said, I got to speed my bat up a little bit, snap that slider off, and you get a funky swing like that. AJ Hinch came right out to the mound after that strikeout to make a pitching change. So this could be the first major league win for Vince Velasquez. 
He leaves with a runner at first, one out of the seventh inning, and a five to three lead. Josh Fields for you in just a moment. But first, we're going to talk about another way to follow the Astros this season. That would be with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Bart. Orbit working the crowd while Josh Fields comes in. His first appearance since Saturday against the Yankees. He worked two shutout innings. And as the hard throwing right hander takes over, it's Alex Rios facing him. Two and one with a 1.85 ERA for 24 games. Rios is 0 for 4, lifetime against Fields. Fouls it for strike one. Rios drove in a run with a single in the second inning. Very good night for Vince Velasquez. He showed more polish. Added some different wrinkles tonight and pitched very effectively. Gave up two runs in the first, another one in the second. Slammed the door after that. That's a hit past the diving Marwin Gonzalez into left field. Orios keeps the Royals moving. He advances Perez to second base and gets Infante to the plate. Talked about the bullpens. Cardinals with a 2.01 pen ERA are in first in their division. Of course, the Royals with their outstanding 2.05 ERA, first in their division. The Astros are first, and they have the fourth best bullpen ERA. Yeah, I'm not quite sure Jeff Luna was expecting the turnaround to happen this quickly and this drastically for the Houston Astros. A lot of games blown late with the leads that they did have, but that improved bullpen has. Jettison them into the first place spot. They're going to lean on them tonight. Now with two men on, Omar Infante comes up for the third time. He struck out and fly to right. That's strike one on the fastball of Fields. Kevin Herrera warming up for Kansas City. He has not pitched in this series. Very good night for Velasquez. Well, the way he has pitched and Lance McCullers has pitched in this series has increased awareness for their talents coming up from double A. 0 oh 2. That's what you want to see from those young kids, too, is the improvement. The excitement of actually being in the major leagues and now realizing you belong here and Start making those adjustments to win ball games. And they're doing it for a first place club. In the dirt, it gets away, but no advance. 
It was headed for the third base line, and that meant a short throw for Castro, so Perez did not try to move up. One and two now for Josh Fields. Really didn't look like Salvador was anticipating a ball in the dirt. The Athletics won over Colorado at home, four to one. Jesse Hahn going to six and six. Tyler Clipper getting his 14th save. This goes out to right field. Tucker. That's out number one. Uh, number two, rather, and it's Dyson coming up next. There's different outfield alignment with Santana in center field now. Created uh, out of necessity with George Springer leaving after being hit on the hand with a pitch. And the fact that Colby Rasmus is evidently not available tonight, and Jake Marisnik's out on a rehab assignment. The Astros look at a little bit different type of outfield. Dyson has struck out both times. Domingo probably has played some center field somewhere along the line. In the minor leagues. That's up for ball one. Mark Burley went to nine and four with the Blue Jays 11 to two win over the Red Sox in Toronto beating Rick Porcello. Porcello four and nine. There's Herrera in the Royals bullpen. And Carnacion with number 17. Justin Smoke hit a pair for Toronto. Josh Donaldson number 19. One ball, one strike. Ricky Betts hit his ninth for the Red Sox. Joe Thatcher warming up in the bullpen on Canada Day. Big Poppy's hitting 228, Blummer. Big Poppy? Yep. He's having a tough time with those shifts. Isn't he one of those guys that's most shifted on? Yes, he is. You and Alan Ashby will be telling us all about that Friday night. Give you the breakdown. Thank you. Are you be watching? Yes. Nice, Brownie. I love that. Always. Two balls and a strike. Porcello, who lost for Boston, has an ERA of 6.08 right now. He's got too good of stuff to be putting up those numbers. Yankees have knocked off the Angels 3 to 1 in Anaheim. Gives the Astros a chance to pull five games ahead of the Angels. That slap foul. Texas has lost. In Baltimore, four to two. So an Astros win means they are six ahead of the Rangers. I'll tell you what, the Astros come back from the All Star break. In first place, they're going to be doing a lot more of that than you see on your TV screen. Yes, sir. Peeking over their shoulder, making sure about some of those scores. That makes it a lot of fun for the fans keeping up on other games. Cheering that much harder for their first place ball club. Love this scoreboard here. Yeah. During a pennant race. I, I completely agree. Well, you were too busy playing, but boy, during those pennant races in 04 and 05, it just added to the enjoyment, as you say, for the fans to watch those hand operated scoreboards go up inning by inning while watching this game. Well, I think that's part of the beauty of it. It's almost like being at the Masters and waiting for somebody to slide that number in. And when you see that that F go up for a loot or a loss and make it final, fans start to recognize, players recognize, put a little more emphasis on the game you're playing right here at Midway. Three, two, two outs, runners move, and there's a line drive over shortstop into left center field, and that's going to tie this game at five. And here's Dyson running for third. He will make it. Once again, Vince Velasquez will not get his first major league win. Amazing. A two run triple by Dyson into left center field.
Well, no way you expect these Royals to roll over. But when you've got a winning ball club, you're going to get some big hits from the unlikely guys. And Gerard Dyson in there for Lorenzo Cain playing center field. Saw a lot of fastballs in that at bat. Gets to a 3 2 count. Gets a fastball where he can handle it. Drives it in that left center field gap. That was a beautiful at bat by a clutch ball club right now, fighting their way back into this ball game. Alcides Escobar is 0 for 3. Runner third, two outs. Ball one from Fields. Big disappointment for the Velasquez family with the no decision for Vince. Six and a third innings. Five hits, four runs. One walk, seven strikeouts. Pitch is up, and it's 2 0 to Escobar. Castro will go out. Bullpen still busy for Houston. Thatcher's been working. Must be hitting the stockus on deck, so Thatcher could be coming in if the inning continues. Now Will Harris is cranking it up. The Astros will have Altuve, Gaddis, and Valbuena do up in the bottom of the seventh inning. Nate Evaldi won for the Yankees three to one at Anaheim over the Angels. He's eight and two. Matt Shoemaker is four and seven. Fly ball out to Domingo Santana in center. That ends it in the Royal seventh inning, but they fight back to tie. They get two runs on two hits and leave a man. It's five five. Bottom of the seventh. Hey, this is your last chance to vote for Jose Altuve for the second base All Star starting position for the American League. Altuve is barely trailing and needs a final push to win. Voting ends tomorrow night, so make sure to vote Altuve 35 times at Astros.com slash vote. Jose having another nice night tonight, going three for three. Let's check out the voting where it stands right there. He's still a little over 200,000 votes behind Omar Infante at the second base position. Still dominated by the Royals, but we like to sure like to see that an Astro out there at second base in the form of Jose Altuve. You can vote all the way up until 11:59 tomorrow night. Guys, back to you. You can be assured some people will be doing exactly that at 11:59 tomorrow night. Thank you, Bart. Here's Calvin Herrera, pitcher number three. He is a flamethrower. He's one and one. With a 210 ERA, lefties hitting 133 against him. Right handers surprising. 261, Jeff Blum. That is surprising. Another electric arm coming out of that Royals bullpen. He's only averaging around 98 miles an hour with a cut fastball. Curveball, changeup. What is changeup coming in there about 89, 90 miles an hour? Oh. Devastating. Get it ready. 
Volquez gets off the hook. Five innings, eight hits, five runs, one walk, eight strikeouts. Morales goes two thirds of an inning, line one hit, no runs, no walks, one strikeout, two strikeouts rather. And now Herrera versus Altuve. Jose three for three tonight with an RBI. Ball one in the upper 90s. Get it ready. Get that foot down early. Keep those hands back. Be quick. 33rd appearance this season ties him with Wade Davis for the Royals club lead. That one hit him. Uh, it's been a tough night first of all for Springer and now Altuve hit by a pitch. Fastball running up and in. You bring those hands in. Ooh. Bit of a glancing blow on that forearm, but still at 97, 98 miles an hour, that's going to be hard. Well, Tube, who has 22 steals. At the back end of a double steal with Springer back in the first inning. They'll check him now. That area between the wrist and the elbow. A little higher up than where George Springer got hit. Can we imagine what AJ's saying right here? Probably trying to loosen him up, get a giggle out of him, lighten the mood a little bit. But I guarantee you, Altuve is going to be a little annoyed by being hit. He might be off the races here pretty quick. Second time he's been hit, the first hit batter all year by Herrera. Now it's Gaddis. Gaddis with a two run single in the fifth inning. Gave the Astros the lead five to three. He had struck out the first two times. Double play up for Escobar and Infante. That's up and in. Ball one. Wow. It's going to get a little dicey if there's another one of those. There's a conversation going on at home plate between Gaddis and Perez. Herrera was suspended five games earlier this year. And Giordano Ventura. He's both not afraid to point at a guy and say he's going to come after their head. Yeah. Well, he and Brett Laurie got into it. Herrera was tossed out of the game after throwing behind Brett Laurie. Ventura had been ejected the day before. Now back. One ball, one strike. Herrera was suspended for two games. There was a bench clearing brawl, and those two teams really got into it. The Royals felt disrespected early in the season. Runner going, swing and a miss. The throw hit him, and he's safe. Stolen base by Altuve, his second of the night, 23rd of the year. He's been drilled twice now in this inning. A magnet for that baseball. Good jump. You know Altuve has the ability to put himself in scoring position. Good jump, head down, straight through the bag. That one got him where it doesn't hurt a whole lot. One and two. Right in the wallet. Yeah. Got of stares out at Calvin Herrera. 24 years old from the Dominican Republic. Last year, pitched in 70 games, did not give up a homer all of last year. Foul back. Now this trio, when put together, is the best in baseball. Herrera, Davis, and Hall. Kansas City. By, by a long ways, too. The numbers is those three guys put up. Wait, Davis is borderline unhittable. Yeah. City three for seven, Houston two for eight, with men in scoring position. Up the middle, hit him on the leg, carries over to Infante, who throws out Gaddis. Tough break for Gaddis. Well, he got the pitcher anyway. And a little retribution. Yeah, he got the runner over to third. Altuve advancing. 
Let's say he drilled the guy who drilled Altuve. Four seam fastball riding up. We know Gaddis doesn't really have many issues trying to get on top of high heaters. It's about that left hamstring of Herrera. But that is a case of bad luck. Not sure what this meeting is going on at the mound, but the live action replay. Dennis got that ball pretty good. Two strikes in the count. He hit it hard up the middle. Valbuena is 0 for 3. Runner in third, infield in, one out. 5 5 game in the seventh. I think it's been interesting throughout the course of this game. You mentioned it earlier when we were talking off air how well they're putting the ball in play with two strikes. Albuena takes a look at ball one. Carter hit his homer on a 2 2 pitch in the fourth. Marwin Gonzalez hit his homer on a 1 2 pitch in the fifth. Altuve had an RBI single one and two to the count. Gaddis had the single that broke the tie. Driving in two on an 0-2 count. Great hitting with two strikes for the Astros tonight. It's a good sign. Every single hit that's driven in a Houston run came with two strikes. That'll make Dave Hudgens real happy. And now 3-0. and Morales oh. coming over from first. Herrera's given up two home runs this year, but he had gone 95 innings without surrendering a long ball through the end of last season. That was a Royals club record for the leader. Well, Buena takes a four pitch walk, so he's hit a batter and now walks. Well, Buena Carter comes up. Dave Island, the pitching coach, is on his way. Second walk for Royals pitching tonight. Time now for the Mako big hit of the game. We're going to put an S on the end of that word hit. Hits. Chris Carter got himself a hanging breaking ball in the inner third. Turns on it. Marwin Gonzalez laid out a laser to right field into the bleachers for a home run. Evan Gaddis with a big two run. What turned out to be a single, but still a two strike base hits for the Houston Astros for those two strike RBIs. Good things happen when you put together good at bats, put that ball in play with two strikes, give yourself a chance to score some runs, and they have tonight. Runners at first and third, one out for Carter. Singleton on deck. Ball one to Carter. Nice to see one of those bombs with some runners on base, Brownie. This would be a beautiful time to break out one of those. Carter tops one to third. Mustakas comes home and the tag by Perez. Not in time. Altuve scores the go ahead run. What a slide. And I think that was a great decision by Mustakas. That ball chopped from Carter, and he's charging in. Really, the only play he had, trying to get that play at home. And I'm sure Ned Yost is checking this one out. We will too. What a slide going to the outside part away from the catcher. I don't know. Saw some contact. Good job by Perez to get that glove on him. Hand just sneak in there. Maybe. Great slide by Altuve. And again, it's got to be evident to be able to turn it over. I'm not sure if it's in there. Yeah, he did a terrific job. Great job. Nice slide. Mustakas did a great job. Should be a good angle. Is that simultaneous? Really close. 
That's incredible. Now the fans are seeing it here on El Grande. I love the fact that we call that thing El Grande. That's beautiful. Yeah. Paul Emmel is the home plate umpire. Jerry Meals is the crew chief. They are the two umpires on the headsets. Replay center in New York. And it was really a close call at home plate. Extremely. What a great ball game. Hard fought. Runs being scored. Clutch hitting. Good defense. We know the Royals are going to play good defense. That's how they won the championships. We've got the bullpen pitching, but how about Herrera being out there and the Astros putting together a situation where they possibly score the go-ahead run here in the seventh on a hit-by-pitch walk? This decision will really impact this game, which is tied here in the seventh inning. Run has been chalked up there on our scoreboard for Houston, but it might be taken away by the decision in New York. Still waiting for that. What I love is that you got two first place teams going at it, so you know that everybody up in New York is gathering around the monitors that they have, checking this out, making real sure because this might have a little bit of an impact moving later in the season. Woo! Oh, it's that close. That is so close. I mean, they are moving frame by frame on this thing. There does not appear to be enough evidence to overturn the call. From what we can see. Many replays. Just too close to call. It really is. It's amazing how close that was. But I, you got to give a ton of credit to Mustakas for making a great play, charging in with the throw. Perez with a great swipe tag to make contact. But Altuve, are you kidding me with that slide? Knowledge and body control to be able to get by him. Sneak that hand in there. Altuve has been on base all four times tonight. He was hit by the pitch on the wrist, and then his legs have gone to work to try to inflict damage on Kansas City. He stole second, advanced to third on a grounder, and may have scored on a big one hopper to third base. It's always interesting to me when they showed on the big board the reaction from the crowd. There was really, you didn't hear much of a reaction either way. They're grinding this one out. This one's taking a while. Like, isn't it the longer the jury is out, the better chance you have of uh, being safe? Probably. An exhaustive look up in New York. When it takes that kind of a frame by frame examination, it's just so difficult to overturn the call on the field. Looks like Dallas Keiko returned from the clubhouse with a report. Better believe he agrees with us. But at what point in New York do you just say, look, we can't figure it out? We've looked at every angle and here we go. Here's the decision. Safe. The Astros have the lead, six to five. Runners at first and second. And one out of the inning. They look for more now. After the long delay, Herrera goes back to work. This is fun, Brownie. Oh, it's dripping baseball. John Singleton's one for three. And that added to the drama. A long examination for the replay took. Four minutes and ten seconds. Josh Fields liking the outcome. AJ Hinch and the Astros players fully accepting that quite well. Now two and zero to Singleton, perhaps being out there for a while without pitching can have an effect on Herrera. He's been wild to start with. And behind all the batters. Strike makes it 2 1. Now, those 2 0 counts, and you're facing a guy like Herrera. Granted, he does throw 96 to 98 miles an hour. 
good time to get it ready and buggy whip one. Stevenson tried. It's two and two. Herrera was signed by the Royals in 06. First came to the big leagues in 2011. Into that setup role, he had 19 holds in 2012, 20 more in 2013, and then 20 again last year. Singleton's down on strikes, two outs now. Preston Tucker bats, he's one for three. At second, Carter at first, two outs in the inning. Astros have out hit Kansas City tonight. Nine to seven, no errors in the game. Tucker looks at it and it's ball one. I've seen a lot of changeups from Herrera. Falling behind with it, putting himself in fastball counts. Astro hitters hopefully recognizing that. Swings and it's one and one. The Royals led three to nothing. The Astros started scoring in the fourth inning. They got one. And they got four more in the fifth to go up 5 3. Kansas City tied it with two in the top of the seventh inning. They had the big two strike hit on a 3 2 pitch to Gerard Dyson. Two run triple tied the game. Now the Astros on top again by one. Tucker with a bouncer in the hole. Here's Escobar throwing to Infante for the force play to end the Astros seventh. They get one run on no hits and leave two. They're up six to five after seven. Gone back and forth. The Royals' biggest loss uh, of a lead, a three run lead, and they've had that tonight. They led three to nothing. The Astros then came back to take a five to three advantage. Royals tied at five five. Now Houston's up six five as Joe Thatcher comes in for the eighth Jeff Mump. Yes, he does. It will be the 30th appearance on the season for Joe Thatcher. Bringing that. Funky sidearm delivery with his fastball slider changeup combination. 211 against lefties. Yet to give up an extra base hit to those left handed hitters. He's looking to face Moustakis. I'm not sure he'll face much more than that. Lefty specialist. Kane will be due up second in the inning. Then Kendris Morales, a switch hitter. Astros bullpen continues to be busy with this one run lead in the eighth. Well, these two teams have been sensational at protecting leads. When the Royals lead after seven, their record is 34 and 0. The 
Astros are 37 and 3 when they lead after seven. Stockus looks at ball one upstairs. That's Velasquez through 88 pitches, 60 for strikes. Josh Fields in two thirds of an inning, allowed two hits, one run, with no walks, no strikeouts. It's upstairs, and it's 2 0 to Mustakas. 0 for 3 tonight, 0 for 11 in this series. Three and up. Royals are dead last in drawing walks this year in the American League. They've drawn one tonight. Three and one. Joe Thatcher has been in the strike zone great majority of the time this year. It's a big pitch coming up. Got it in on him. It's foul back for a 3 2 count now on Mustakas. Good job working back. Mustakas may have done him a little bit of a favor. It's a great look at. Now Thatcher puts his body in a position to make that delivery. Kids at home, please don't repeat that. <laughs> After you do, you may want to learn all about chiropractors. Yeah, no doubt. Go three and two. Thatcher worked Monday night, two thirds of an inning, no hits, no runs. Relief of Lance McCullers. He got Mustakas Monday night on a grounder to first. Center field, Domingo Santana. One out, good comeback as Thatcher was at 3 0 after three pitches. Good smile for Domingo. It's Lorenzo Kane next, but he'll be facing not Thatcher, but a right hander. Great adjustment to battle back, but that's extra nasty on that 3 2 count to hit that low and outside corner. At the end of the bat of Moustakas. Pat Nishek is coming in. 6 to 5. Houston back in the moment. It by one run, six to five over Kansas City. Looking for games on certain days of the week with giveaways, your favorite rivalries, or maybe a little of each. With the Astros' 14-game flex plan, you you get to pick the games and seat locations that work best for you. Purchase your 14-game flex plan today by visiting astros.com/tickets or calling 1-877-9-ASTROS. 
Pat Nishek comes out of the bullpen. He's pitcher number four tonight for A.J. Hinch. He's having quite a year. In 33 games, three and one, one save, a 2.76 ERA, and a whip, 0.82. Lorenzo Cain is facing him. He has two hits and three at bats. Marlon Gonzalez. One pitch, one out for Nishek. Andres Morales hit a two run homer in the first inning off Vince Velasquez. He's one for three. This Astros bullpen is 15 and 13 with a 2.56 ERA. Has worked 235 innings. The Royals bullpen has worked 245 innings. And these two units are really largely responsible for what their teams have been doing. Late swing by Morales is strike one. Thatcher retired the only man he faced the Stockus. The Astros in their eighth inning have Gonzalez Castro and Santana do to bat. Foul ball makes it 0 and 2. And there's quite a bit on the line in terms of the Astros lead tonight. They have a chance to add to their lead over both the Angels and the Rangers. Both of whom have lost. Ishek throws and it's one and two. The Corpus Christi Hooks hosted the Texas League All Star game last night. The North beat the South nine to four. Astros prospect Chris Devensky started for the South. He worked two scoreless innings with two strikeouts. Davinsky seven and one with a 1.16 ERA for the Hooks this year. And hit him on a one-two pitch. Morales hit by the pitch. Now both sides what? are worn. Are you kidding me? You're not going to be hitting a guy with a one and two count on purpose, right? No. No. But both sides have been warned now after an exchange of hit batters in this game. I think it's such a crutch for some umpires to use this. They don't want to have things get out of hand on their watch. Just a slider that gets away from Nishek. Paul Amel, the home plate umpire, has issued warnings to both teams. In a one run game? That would be odd. To hit a batter on purpose in that game. Perez with the bouncer. Valbuena throws him out. It's no runs, no hits. A runner left. Six to five. Houston in the eighth.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Well, this game has had a little bit of everything. It's 6-5. to five. The Astros lead it. Both sides have now been warned by home plate umpire Paul Immel. After Kendrys Morales was hit on a 1-2 pitch from Pat Neshek. Now Wade Davis, pitcher number four, comes in the game from Kansas City. Phenomenal numbers. ERA. Why even have one if it's a point two seven? <laughs> Unbelievable. Throws incredibly hard. Fastball split slider. Last home run allowed was September 4th of 2013. Was facing the league leader in home runs in the Houston Astros. Maybe somebody can jump him. Marwin Gonzalez went deep back in the fifth inning. He has struck out twice as well in a one for three night. The Astros trying to add to their lead. The Royals will have Gordon Rios and Infante do up in the ninth. Mustakas on the grass at third. Best ball strike one. Herrera in one inning allowed no hits one run had one walk hit a batter. And had a strikeout. He is on the hook right now for this game. There is strike one to Gonzalez with Castro on deck. And Santana do up next after Castro. But it Davis to first one out. Now these guys Herrera and Davis have not pitched in this series. Holland has not pitched because the Royals have not had a lead. So they come in here to keep it close but Herrera in a tie game gives up the go ahead run. Now Davis faces Castro Castro 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. 34 appearances already for Wade Davis and a 134 batting average against him. He took over as the closer for a while. Greg Holland was sidelined and he has picked up nine saves. Tight to Castro, ball one. And the Orioles win over the Rangers four to two in Baltimore. Wei Yin Chen went to four and four, beating Nick Martinez is five and five. Zach Britton got his 23rd save. In for a strike, and it's one and one for Wade Davis. I think the 92 mile an hour backdoor cutter is the reason I'm sitting up here right now. <laughs> Just not fair. You're gearing up for 95, 97 miles an hour, and he backdoors a cutter like that at 92. That's tough. One and two. Ray Davis was drafted by Tampa Bay in 04 in the third round. Traded in that multiplayer deal to Kansas City after the 2012 season, along with James Shields. For Will Myers, Jake Odorizzi, and some other players. Last year, Wade struck out 109 in 72 innings. Close one, but off the plate, and it's two and two to Castro. Davis earned the save Sunday in the Royals' five to three win at Oakland. Holland had the day off after back-to-back -back outings. And nice to have closer A and closer B, and that's what Ned Yost has on his staff. And there's not a whole lot of difference between A and B. Davis is nine for nine in saves. Flair goes foul and out of play. Davis averaging 13.15 strikeouts per nine innings over his last 13 appearances. You don't sound convinced. Well, you, the convincing stat was the one you gave. No home runs allowed in his last 115 innings. Unbelievable. Yeah. Got 
Foul straight back for Castro. Santana is on deck. Been quite a homestand for Astros fans. Splitting the four games with the Yankees. Now a hard fought series. Kansas City had scored only one run in the first two games. Has fought back to score five tonight, but Ed Yost is going to need more than what he has to win this one. Flared foul again. The Stockers will watch it go back out of play. Heck of a bat for Castro. Very good. Keep fighting off 96. Keep waiting for Wade Davis to, to make Wade Davis to make the mistake, but he is not. And he hasn't in a couple of years now. <laughs> this will be the ninth pitch to Castro. Stays in play. Here's Castro into second, and the throw hits him from Rios. A hustling double on a broken bat. Tremendous at bat by Jason Castro. Congratulations, Jason Castro. That was a professional at bat put together by Jason. Still not a mistake from Wade Davis. Just a better job of bringing the hands in, fighting it off, sneaking it inside that line. Good hustle to put himself in scoring position too with one out. Tenth double for Castro. Tenth hit for the Astros. Santana struck out in the sixth inning. He ended the game with the injured George Springer. That strike one. George didn't want to come out after being hit by a pitch in the fifth inning. Jose Altuve's on deck. Altuve scored the go ahead run. And the Carter grounded a third in the seventh inning. Play that was reviewed. One and one. Astros 11 and 11 in one run games. Two on Santana. Dodgers lead four nothing in Arizona. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning now in the desert. Santana's down on strikes. Two out. Friday's pitching matchup will be presented by Chevron. They want you to care for your car. Talk about Dan Shirley getting the call out on Friday. Get to make his Astros debut out there in Boston. He's going up against Justin Masterson. Masterson 3 and 2 on the season. You see the 4.06 ERA for Shirley out there in the PCL. Not too shabby. Plenty of big league experience too. Jose Altuve is at a very active night. Three hits and RBI. He was hit by a pitch. He's stolen two bases, scored two runs. In for strike one call. Prior to this year, the last time the Astros won 46 games within the first 81 games of a season it was in 99. Won 46 right now. Top goes foul. In fact, if they win this game, they'll have an identical record 
to that 99 team after 81 games, 47 and 34. History to repeat itself. That 99 team had plenty of talent. Altuve fouls it back. They must have had a lengthy rain delay in St. Louis. They're only in the third inning with the Cardinals leading the White Sox. One to nothing. John Lackey on the mound. Cardinals are 51 and 25. Altuve fouls it. Look back at Astros history leading the division at the 80 game mark. The 98 team was five games up, finished 12 and a half games ahead. 97, one game up. 79, seven games ahead. Finished a game and a half behind Cincinnati. 97 club beat out the Pirates. In tight. Ooh. One and two. Yup. Two of it. And then fouling all pitches away. That was in on him. Tried to cut it back on that inside corner. Didn't quite get the move when he's got previously. Two, two. Well, we have seen some real battling and bats from these Astros hitters tonight. We sure have. Great two strike hitting. Five of the hits have been with two strikes. Rolled out to shortstop Escobar to end it in the Astros eighth. No runs are hitting the man left. We move to the ninth, six to five, Houston. Stay tuned out for the game for Kevin Eschenfelder, Art Howe, and the Astros post-game show presented by Houston Methodist. There will be plenty going on on that show tonight, Blummer. I was just going to say it could be a good one. It will be a good one. I like it. I like it. Jose Altuve will be featured prominently on the show. Now Luke Gregerson. Pitcher number five of the night for the Astros comes in with the one run lead. Pat Neshek in two thirds of an inning, allowing no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. He hit a batter, and Gregerson is 12 for 12 in saves at home, 18 for 20 overall. Those are good numbers and pointing in the right direction. 
And that's why you're taking into account Bill Brown's positivity. Back into the bullpen's been fantastic. Gregerson with that slider sinker combo. Well, he gets a new baseball from home plate umpire Paul Emmel before going to work. And he'll be working to Alex Gordon. Gordon led off the second inning with a single and came around to score. He's one for three. Astros have out hit the Royals 10 to 7. No errors tonight. Houston stranding eight. Kansas City leaving three. Astros going for a sweep of this series. When the Royals came in for game one of the series, they were on a four game winning streak. Now the Astros are trying to stretch their winning streak to four. The infield shifts around on Gordon. And it's ball one. Gregerson entered the game Sunday in the ninth inning. And got save number 18 against the Yankees. One ball, one strike. That was in a three to one win. The appeal went to third base. Check swing call made there by Jordan Baker. It's two and one to Gordon. Josh Fields could be the winning pitcher in this one. Gordon swings and it's two and two. How about that? That's nice. Kind of take that for granted with Gregerson only throwing 90 miles an hour. The Astros closer fastball slider, but he's able to locate and create so much sync on that. I was just looking at these numbers actually. I appreciate the guys in the truck putting this up. Because when he's pitching to lefties, it's about 70% fastball, close to 30% off speed. But when he gets to those two strikes, it actually flips and he gets heavy on that slider to put hitters away. Rios is on deck. Gregerson. One out. Big out. First out in save situations is always key for these guys. He's retired the first batter now in 23 of his 32 appearances. Rios has two hits tonight, an RBI and a run scored. And Fonte's in the on deck circle. Royals head home after this, the finale of a nine game road trip. The Astros will leave tomorrow on a 10 game trip. Will not return until after the All Star break. That's Fowler strike one, but they love to leave it with 20 wins in their last 27 home games. Great numbers. There you get to see the flip side against righties. It's actually interesting. The first pitch to Rios was a fastball. But that good slider going away from righties. Oh, and two. Next home game for the Astros will be July 17th against Texas. Great look at a great pitch. One ball, two strikes. Gregerson becoming a full time closer this year. Has been primarily a setup man. It's gone well in the conversion. He gets a strikeout. Two outs. Some kind of special when a guy goes out there and pitches with confidence like Luke Gregerson is right now. Driving in that closing role. Starts it on that outer third, gets that good late break. It just kind of lingers out there until hitters start their swing and then breaks away. The crowd is up. This is a good hitting team that does not strike out much. The fewest times in the American League. Striking out. 
Infante goes 0 for 3. Trying to bunt, he misses. Dyson's on deck. A win tonight would give the Astros a 28 and 16 home record. Best in the American League. Ground ball to short. Marlon Gonzalez completes a sweep. Gregerson getting a save. And the Astros come from behind. They trailed the defending American League champions by three. Went up 5 3. Kansas City tied it. And Jose Altuve scored a contested run on a close play at the plate in the seventh inning. On a grounder by Chris Carter. It held up 6 to 5. It was a great battle of the bullpens tonight. Something that really did not materialize the 